Welcome back to the Stash Club Wrestling Podcast. My name is John. My name is Dante. Today, we are coming off one of the best weekends of my life. I want to speak for everyone here. Probably one of the best weekends of our lives. We're coming back from Philadelphia from our trip at WrestleMania 40. And we brought a special guest with uh, with us. Excuse me. Today, we are joined by... Hold on, I wrote a cool intro. Uh, as of this past weekend in Philly, our wrestling godmother, the Joshi <laughs> Wrestling Plug, Miss Press Pass, Queen of the Ring, aka Alex Lejas. Alex, what's going on? Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the show. What is happening? Y'all, we're still recovering. Mm-hmm. It's been a long weekend. Although, y'all, do you have pneumonia from Saturday? Y'all were cold. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It was a bit chilly, but hey, to everyone on Twitter, it, was, it wasn't that bad. So that pe- the people sure. that I'm, weren't there. I'm sure it was nice and warm in the I press guess. box. <laughs> they had the heated nice seats and, and everything. I was cozy, had some blueberry cheesecake. Mm. I saw that. Mm-hmm. It looked crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. So for those that don't know, uh, all three of us were um, at WrestleMania weekend uh, in Philly this weekend. Yes, we were. And I feel like we've known of each other for a while, but uh, in Philly was the first time that us three were able to actually connect. Uh, so that was, that was that was really cool. We got to hang out uh, all, after like a while of like three days of like, where are you? Where are you? You where are you? Finally, that Sunday night got to hang out and meet, and uh, here now we we're here. Here we are. Yeah, doing a podcast together. How about that? Um, I don't want to finally. Finally. Fin- finally. It's been a minute. It's been it's been long overdue. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like I said, I don't want to. Well, I do, and I don't want to speak for everyone, but like, but like, man, what easily one of the best weekends of my life. Oh, I yeah. had a ball. It was exhausting. It wasn't like a relaxing trip. Oh, but 100%. like, I had so much fun. It was Dante and I's first WrestleMania. Yep. Um, and again, I'm not going to speak for everyone the entire show, but um, yeah, it was so cool to. <laughs> to meet everyone we took a lot of pictures yep. you know really you know connecting faces with the community and um th- thank you again for everyone for being in the video we put out the other yeah, day that was absolutely cool. um yeah it's awesome. a really really again, cool experience involved. a lot of a lot of learning curves i think went in for sure and and we got to see cody finish his story live huh yeah we we saw a lot of things i saw a lot of uh things i never would have imagined one the rock wrestling i mean at this point in, in his life and stuff like that i feel like getting to see him wrestle doesn't come around uh, too often nowadays so the fact that we saw that and also just obviously everyone knows what happened night two john cena came out the <laughs> undertaker came out i mean all of them in the same ring uh, at the same time probably hasn't happened and maybe even ever <laughs> so the fact so the fact that we were there live to experience it was <laughs> One of the craziest experiences, one of the craziest weekends of my life, a thousand percent. Alex, uh, what was super the highlight, grateful. What was the highlight of your weekend or highlights? Sure Besides meeting more. us, oh, yeah, right, yeah. of course. There's... <laughs> Number one, we're done. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> definitely meeting you guys because, like, when y'all tweeted out that you were going to be in Philly, I was like, we have to meet up. Yeah, for sure. Uh, especially after doing the fightful roundtable together. Of course. Um, Going to WrestleCon, again, like meeting fans, meeting viewers, like that's always the best part of the weekend, honestly, is just to mm-hmm. see like your impact and like your success in live and in person. You know what I mean? Because like 100%. virtually, digitally, it, it's great. Like the numbers are good, but to actually like make face with people is the best feeling in the world. But man, WrestleMania was wild. That was the best WrestleMania I've been to. I want to say this is my sixth. Wow. WrestleMania, I believe. Yeah, my first one was WrestleMania 33. And that was okay. wild because I got to experience the Hardy Pop. Oh, oh my God. I got a uh, noise complaint uh, yeah, when I was yeah, in my yeah, college yeah. when that happened. Did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I would have uh, passed out if I was there live. We went to... <laughs> I almost did because the night before we went to Ring of Honor and we saw the okay. Hardys wow. be or yeah, face the Young Bucks in the ladder match. And then they came out and we lost our minds. Mm-hmm. But even for this one was wild. Dude, even Seth coming back with the sh- like as the shield. Oh, yeah. Didn't was... even mention that. Yeah. I mean, every I think oh everyone God. for a wild. split second was like, wait, where's Mox? I where's thought, Mox? I thought we Mox? were seeing Moxley. <laughs> Did Triple H and Tony put, put aside their differences for this one moment? No, but it was crazy. <laughs> I saw I saw I articles. I thought so, too. I saw I saw yeah, articles. Yeah, I think yeah. I think from from uh, our guy Liam over at Comic Book. I think he put out an article about 
uh, uh, confirmed, WWE did not contact no. AEW to get Moxley or <laughs> no. whatever. It figured. <laughs> but it would have been sick. Um, well, we're going to we're gonna go like everything. It was that delusional like, thought process. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, no. Well, 100%. I mean, yeah. I mean, we see uh, The Rock yeah, yeah, yeah. come out. And at that point, it's just like <laughs> anything could happen now. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, we're going over everything. Yeah. Uh, but to start, to start, to start, to start, the hottest news, most controversial news, uh, on Dynamite last night, they played the all-in footage, the, the backstage footage <laughs> with Punk and Jack Perry. Yes, they did. And then they started a copyright striking people that were posting it on Twitter right after. Uh, that's just because they want people to watch the show. I'm not yeah, putting crazy. that into yeah, there's a lot that went in that was involved in this situation. Um, I don't know who wants to who wants to who wants to make people mad first. Who was? <laughs> I mean, I don't really even have like much of an opinion on it personally. Like, I I, I just look at something like I'm not saying who's in the right, who's in the wrong. That's not yeah. really what I'm trying to get at. I just like when I heard the news, I'm like, okay, like this is this is definitely going to be something I want to see to see what they do. Like, if it's mm-hmm. actual footage, if it's like whatever, but like. I, I don't know. I, I just kind of look at it from the perspective of, like, who gains what from this? Like, what's the benefit of it? Like, I, I just didn't think it was something. I know Punk had his interviews. He said his thing, whatever. But I just felt like it was something that I don't think anyone gains it, anything from it. So, like, Absolutely I didn't really not. see a point in it. That That's really all I yeah. have to say about it. I'm not saying who's right, who's wrong. You know, someone got fired. Someone got suspended. All this happened. But it happened months ago. So, like... Yeah, that's just kind of where I stand. Yeah, Alex, let's get let's get a clip here. What do we got? I I don't know how to feel about it because, like, first of all, the funniest part is just Hook standing there, and it was so <laughs> New York of him yeah. to just stand there and just watch all this stuff happen. Yep. He's like, "Damn, that's crazy." My fucking, he's like, he's like, should I, I mean, get like, in? And he just like com- puts down the title. <laughs> <laughs> like gently puts down the title mm. chris hero just in disbelief at the end of it <laughs> yep. Malachi black mm-hmm. just walking like from fra- into frame but i don't i don't know it's like the azalea banks video of like the girls are fighting because that's exactly how yeah. it mm. feels like tony khan is giving ex-girlfriend with receipts Um, yeah i don't i don't know (laughs) like it's it's one of those things where it's like i don't think this benefits anybody other than shows how pettiness runs so deep in professional (laughs) wrestling um Uh if anything i don't know because people are like well punk is a liar punk is telling the truth and this and that and it's like I mean, Punk's going to do what Punk does. Like, we saw it when he left WWE and he was on Coca Bana's podcast and he, like, spilled mm-hmm. the tea. And he basically right. did that with the Ariel Wani interview. And Tony Khan doesn't like Ariel Wani either. So it's like a match made in petty heaven, really, for him. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. And I, to hear now that the Bucks weren't for it to to show it and then Tony Schiavone visibly looked upset that they were about I to I saw present that, it. yeah. Um, he, yeah, I think it just proves that CM Punk is a huge star in WWE and still in AEW. Because even in the <laughs> audience, in the arena, people were still chanting CM Punk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. they weren't chanting Jungle Boy doing the Tarzan <laughs> song. Yeah. So I, I don't know what to it think definitely of it. Didn't it's help. Just, I'm thoroughly entertained. It definitely didn't help Jack. It definitely, which like people are saying that might have been, and that might have been the sole reason is like, Oh, make Jack look like the, what are they calling him? The scapegoat. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think it helped that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll be the one to say the hot thing. I think it was lame for everyone. I don't, I don't think it makes like, everyone's like, it makes punk look more iconic. I think he looks the lamest of the bunch. He, 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 he shoved the guy who had his hands in his hair. That's tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did choke a coworker. You know, I think there's an argument to be like, should he be should he have been fired or should he have been suspended? Sure, if you want to have that argument, but if anyone's making the argument of like, ah, oh, it's it's pro wrestling, you're supposed to fight backstage and da da da, uh, then I want you to be disappointed at every wrestling event because like, oh, WrestleMania was awesome. I didn't like it because there wasn't a fight backstage though, and that's pro wrestling. But there wasn't a fight backstage, so it, you know, I don't know. I've never been a huge punk fan. I've been, I became a more and more punk fan, you know, with his AEW run. I thought that was awesome. It's just not cool to be like a big CM Punk. I don't know. He's just lame. Remember when it used to be cool to like CM Punk? And now it's just like, 
You know what I mean? It's just like I mean I, I don't know. I again like I'm not really here. And I'm to not like, saying I dislike Punk. Like like when he comes back to WWE when he fights Drew McIntyre, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. I can think Phil is lame and still mm-hmm. be a big CM Punk guy, but we've just learned that Phil is kind of a baby. Yeah. I mean you know? I. I yeah, again, like, I don't think anyone's in the right in this situation whatsoever. And, yeah, and I'm not saying anyone's in the right. I don't AW think, or Jack are in the right. I mean, either. I don't think CM Punk, like, everything that happened, I don't know if he should have aired it all out. I get it. It's great content. People <laughs> love it and stuff. But, like, that's something that you can just, like, you know, that was the company you were just in. You can move on from it. And, two, like, it's just, I don't know. Like, again, I don't know who benefited anything from this. Like, showing that mm. footage last night. It didn't do anything to improve AEW. Maybe they got a ratings boost, which if that was the goal, then they probably accomplished that goal. It didn't... I don't think it made... Personally, I don't think it made Punk look better or worse. So I'm not in the camp for like, oh, it made him look iconic or there's anything no, yeah, like there's that. Nothing because new that it is true, like, what he did say he did, He they showed it, and he did do that. Yeah. So it's not like... They were showing something that he was lying about, whatever. He was telling the truth about assaulting a co Right, yeah, but... Like, but it's like, you, would, like, cool. you would think <laughs> if you if you think that's cool, then you then, would then think worry. that the footage would have been like showing like, oh, he actually did this. <laughs> like, I think I was like maybe expecting like, oh, maybe he did fib about something and mm-hmm. then he did whatever. But again, I just think it's something that happened. What when was this in August? And we're in April now. Ago. So it's just like, I, I just yeah. don't think it's something that needs to be touched up on anymore. Yeah. It, it, I just didn't think it was beneficial to anyone. Mm. That's that's all I have to say no, about it. No, I agree it. with yeah. that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And it's like, this is, this mind you, this is the footage that made Tony Khan say he feared for his life. And it's like, where? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I, that was I another, yeah. That was so I, I was he, seeing like, a lot of people saying yeah, that. Yeah, like that was, yeah, that was really weird. But I also understand like, in his position during WrestleMania weekend, where WWE is like taking jabs at AEW during their biggest mm-hmm. wrestling event uh, yep. of the year. Like I understand feeling the need to defend yourself. Um, I definitely do think that Tony Khan has been holding on to this footage for a long time until he felt like he was waiting for the right, right moment. I'm going to just go after it. Yeah, exactly. He was waiting for the right moment, but mm-hmm. um yeah, I don't know. I think it's just silly all across the board. I think everyone's just silly. The one thing I will say is like Will Ospreay taking a jab at Triple H was, I think, warranted yeah. overall mm. last yeah, night for sure. uh, mm-hmm. on Dynamite. Because like what Triple H said of like, if, you, if you're not into the grind, it's like, do you know who Will Ospreay is? Like the stuff that he's I agree. Through, that was kind of petty. From like New Japan yeah. early days, you know? Yeah, it was, mm-hmm. it, was, it was weird. Like, I didn't think that was right. So... I don't know. It's just, it's funny all around. Like, I, I mean, I'm enjoying mm-hmm. it. I'm sports entertained over everything. Yeah, yeah I'm with at, you. At the end of the day, absolutely. And I, I definitely want to be, before, before people come at me, I definitely want to be clear. Like, I'm not saying, like, CM Punk, this, I, I agree with the people that said this makes him more of a star. Like, absolutely. He's, like, I think, Alex, you said way earlier, like, he's big enough of a star where he is the most talked about person in the company he's not even working for and he's like the hottest star in the company and he's he is got working such for. diehard fans so it's like too. yeah again that's that's the that's the fill in cm punk difference yeah. mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying um but like yeah i'm with me may, maybe going in for the hotter take uh i am definitely in the same camp of like it's silly mm-hmm. they definitely didn't need to and probably shouldn't have showed it who but they cares? Did. I like that they're using it for a storyline at least. They're making yeah. some, it's not great, but they're making something. It, of at it. least it's a part of something. It's yeah, not like, like just still random. Need to show it, right? Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, and yeah, I agree with the, the Will Osprey stuff too. It's like people would say one, you know, if they've been going at each other, they gotta they gotta clap back, and it's I don't know. It's a it's at the end of the day, it's not that deep. No, it's not at the that end deep. Day, it's not at that the end deep. of the day, we're just having fun. It's wrestling. We're being sports entertained. So. I will say, maybe a maybe maybe another take. I will say, I sound lame. Um, if let's say, let's bring this back 10, 10 12 years ago, right? Mm-hmm. If CM Punk, oh, remember remember twelve years ago, CM Punk was the rebel and he's the he's the anti business uh-huh. guy, and he was like, imagine if he was like, I want to use real glass, and someone backstage told CM Punk twelve years ago, no, and yeah. CM Punk went. Fuck you, man! I'm gonna use real glass because he's this like mm. this like this like edgy dude, right? <laughs> wouldn't we all be? Wouldn't everyone be in, be like flip flopped on the side of like fuck anyone that's telling CM Punk not to use real glass? He's a he's a cool guy. He's gonna use real glass. You know what I'm saying? It's like 
and now now he's an old man and it's yeah. just like and now the tables are turned and it's like again i'm not saying i'm i'm pro jack and i'm not saying mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pro putting people in danger but i'm just saying it's like yeah. i don't know i'm just saying i don't yeah i don't really have a an opinion hey. on, on on the glass mm -hmm. usage or anything but at the end of the day i think it's something both companies move on from it and just i don't know focus on focus on your product and stuff that's my last thing that's my mm -hmm. last thoughts there <laughs> Yeah, we do have we do have a lot of mania. To get we do to. have a lot of WrestleMania to talk about. This was big, but enough of that. Who knows what I'm what I'm keeping in from what I said? <laughs> um, all right, WrestleMania, baby. First of all, Alex, I'm glad you're here for this uh, huge huge tally of scores here. If you would like to get oh. that get that title that's over there, oh, yes, sir. Um, this is officially a sweeps a WrestleMania 40 sweep city on the predictions. From your boy and your yeah. new SCW predictions champion. I don't even have to check to see Woo! how many uh, how many points I got because it does not Didn't matter. Didn't get a Crazy. damn one wrong, huh? <laughs> That's insane. Wow. That's impressive. It's very impressive. Alex, we're gonna have to have you on to compete for this uh, on a on a different episode of the pod next time. Yeah, we're we're starting to do triple threat matches yep. now, mm -hmm. so we'll have to get I'm you gonna, in on the next one. I'm gonna one. come up to Boston. Absolutely, I'm gonna come up to Boston and uh, I'm gonna wear all my Yankee gear just to. Piss all right, off Dante. <laughs> enough, <laughs> enough. I was like, I'm fine enough. With that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're here to talk about wrestling, okay? <laughs> go birds, go birds, go birds, go birds. Um, I did get a lot of shit when I was in Philly for wearing this Boston hat. I'm like, what do you want me to do it about was, it? It I'm was from a Boston. tough look. That was the only hat you brought. <laughs> Wait, too, what, so yeah, it is. What am I gonna wear a Phillies hat just because I'm in Philly? Doesn't mean I'm gonna switch switch it up. Come on now, I got a rep. I guess so. <laughs> um, okay. First of all, before we before, before we go anywhere, yep. I want to give someone their flowers, huh? Maybe the goat of the weekend, the MVP of the weekend, Samantha fucking Irvin. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, Round of applause. She dominated WrestleMania weekend. Unreal. Mm -hmm. I'll say it now. Maybe, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just saying takes this mm -hmm. this, this episode. Yeah, a lot of takes. Samantha Irvin is the greatest <laughs> ring announcer of all time. I don't care what anyone says. I think she's the best to ever do it. Hey man, if she isn't the greatest, she is definitely at that table. She was in the conversation. Oh, you don't think she's the greatest? I said if she isn't the greatest, she's at least at the table. What do you think? I don't, I don't really have any. Give I'm me a take. Saying, Give me a take for once. She's, huh? she's one of the Come best. On. She's one Say of the she's best. The worst. Ever. Make she's, people mad. No, no, I don't think she's. I think she's amazing. I think she's um, the best of all time. But yeah, she is definitely in the conversation for greatest of all time. I think she completely killed it this weekend. I think the best thing about her is how like uh, she ties her emotion into it. Like mm -hmm. you could hear like when Sammy won, when Cody won, like the um, even like when Damian Priest cashed in. She was like super into it. She also says, "I I saw this. I don't know what it was from." Um, she was like, she doesn't like to be told beforehand, like who wins the matches because mm -hmm. she wants that like surprise that like she wants to feel the full emotion. So she is she is absolutely one of the best um, I the best the out best. today. And uh, she is she does definitely deserves her flowers. She she was unbelievable this weekend. Just the goat, the goat yeah. of it all, dude. Um, she, I, would say, I saw like, her. People are, people are arguing on Twitter that like she's she's not or like she's overreacting or something like that. Like no, she's just passionate no. about what she does. No, dude. like mm. just like every single call that she did was remarkable. Just mm -hmm. the passion that she put into everything that she did. And I saw her. When was it? I think it was Wednesday or Thursday night. I saw her and like no, no, no I saw her Wednesday and she wore a mask. And she's talked about, like, at Wally Mania that she has to put herself in, like, a vocal rest just to participate Ooh. in these. She was doing it all weekend. She did two nights announcing that, even announcing it during the cold on Saturday night, too. Uh -huh. I can't only imagine, like, how that, you know, m messes with, like, your vocal cords, right, to do that in the cold. But, 100%. like, man, just every everything about her is just amazing. And even... When she was doing the final match, main event, night two, Cody versus Roman, those 4K, like 8K shots that they were doing, mm. I don't know if you guys watched it back, but like yeah. the way that they were presenting it with her, and you can tell, like even in Seth versus Drew, you can tell like Seth was getting hyped up because of her. And I can mm -hmm. only imagine like their energy just exceeding to different levels when she's out there doing the big call. Like she is 
the GOAT. She's definitely in the Mount Rushmore for me of for greatest sure. announcers of all time. Even like uh, you saw on Rob, and I've a few people have done this, but like Cody came out and he was like, Samantha, you know what I'm going to ask you? I need you to do it one more yeah. time. And she like reintroduced him as the mm-hmm. champion and everything like that because that just really fired him up, fired the crowd up. Um, yeah, man, she deserves all the credit in the world she carried this weekend. Uh, one of the goats, 100%. We'll get into it. Uh, we're going to start. We're going to, I mean, we're not saving the best for last year. We are, we, we're starting with the whole thing. We're going to run down the whole, the whole story and then get into the rest of the matches. First and foremost, the night one main event, the Rock and Roman Reigns defeat mm. Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins, making the main event of the next night a bloodline rules match. The cards, the deck, the whole kit and caboodle is stacked <laughs> against Cody here. Um, some quick notes. I'll run, I'll run through some quick things I have. We'll kind of talk about it. Um, First of all, unreal entrances this weekend across the board were unreal. Killer, but like the Rock's final boss entrance mm-hmm. with the fire was crazy. Um, I think I think the the Rock showed people he's like he's like I got in shape for this. People he were kind of like skeptical or whatever. Also had the um, people's belt, people's mm-hmm. championship too that he was awarded. Yeah, which at, is uh, the Hall which of is Fame, just which is funny. so funny, so just funny, so funny. He just care. I get now like I heard the significance of it and it like. It like was 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 given to him, and you know it means it means a right, couple different right. things. But like, out of context, very funny of him just being like showing up. I'm bringing belt. my custom yeah, belt. Yeah. You know? um, <laughs> uh, very very surprising boos. I thought toward Cody, at least in the mm. arena, which that didn't yeah. really hold up for night two. But I, we were hearing some boos in the crowd, which I was nervous about it was one of those i i think i even said like man i know the rock is the final boss he's the heel and all this but i couldn't boo the rock i couldn't yeah, boo yeah. him i wasn't booing cody but i couldn't boo the rock it wasn't in me i couldn't do it they're fighting on the ramp they're fighting in the crowd uh cody hits rock with a rock bottom through the announce table and finally the rock pins cody rhodes yep yep that- alex what do we think I thought it was great, man. I was very sports entertained throughout the whole <laughs> weekend. The booze for Cody was like understood, though, right? Because it's like it's The Rock. When's yeah, the yeah. and it is Philly too. Yeah. Yeah. Like at WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. He came out with the bell bottoms. So I was like, is he wrestling in those? And then it was yeah. like the tearaways. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We bring him back the thighs. Okay. Um, <laughs> We're yeah, showing him off. Fun. He's been working them out. <laughs> yeah, We've got to yeah, show him off. off. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta show them off. But yeah, when they took it to the outside, outside the ring, like it was a fun match. Um, but overall, like the entrances were just phenomenal, dude. Like even the rock, the rock with the fire and like the Brahma mm-hmm. Bull. I was like, damn, he's back, dude. And I couldn't help but to think, like, I feel a little spoiled because I was at WrestleMania 38, right? Yeah, 38, yep. where Stone Cold Steve Austin came out and main mm. evented. And now I'm here at 40 and The Rock is main eventing. I'm like, what is my life? <laughs> in, my 30s in the now. 2020s, I'm in my 30s too. now and I'm seeing him. Yeah, like, Attitude Crazy. is back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think I even I even said to Dante when we were sitting there, like like after the match or like uh, after the entrances, I kind of was like, "Man, we're we're seeing The Rock at WrestleMania 45 wild. right now. That's wild, crazy. Mm-hmm. What the yeah. fuck?" Um, yeah, I thought this was I thought this was solid. I thought this was great. Uh, sh- people were critical. I think I've seen people are critical being like, "It wasn't deserving of the main event spot." Blah blah. It's no. You got The Rock, Seth Rollins, it was Cody, and Where are you going to put them? Where are you going to put them? You're not going to have them in the middle of the you card, know? second to last match. This was the biggest story going into the weekend. And, like, yeah. honestly, the biggest thing come out of this match was all, like, the little, like, all the little uh, things that we can go back to down the line. Like, The Rock beating Cody. He brought that up, you know, on Raw. I mean, they're probably going to they're going to run Rock Cody at some point. And Absolutely. Rock's like, I pinned him, so he deserves a match. Yeah. Maybe all that. And also, Roman speared The Rock. And shout out to The oh, Rock. Oh, yeah. That part was I, 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 You know, I want to give The Rock his flowers. Not that he needs his flowers, but like, man, for a guy that hasn't wrestled, I know he had the WrestleMania 32, like, six-second match. I'm not counting that. 
for his first actual match in 11 years. Look good. Phenomenal. Look good. Act, he was selling yeah. like rent was due. Like he was getting a $30 million check from the TKO. The spear sell was so the good. The spear just sell, like, that, and that's what I was going to allude to. Just when he took that spear and the look on his face, the yelling, like it was perfect. Um, but they planted a ton of seeds that like they can use later on for fuse that they do. Um, and obviously it set up the match for night two. So I, I think the match itself was great, but I think just the story that was told in the match, um, that was the best part. They accomplished a whole lot in this 40, 45 minute match. For sure. Yeah. Um, 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 all right. We can, we can just move on to the the next main event. If everyone's good, yeah. on, good on that. Like yes. I said, we're going to kind of go over just the whole story as a whole. You yeah. Know what I mean? Bleeding into night two. All right. Um, Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare, defeats the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship, finishing his it actually story. Happened. It actually um, happened. This felt big match feel. This felt massive. The entrances, the aura, them, what, they take 20 minutes to actually get in the ring. Yep. That was crazy. Um, False finishes after false finishes. They used each other's finishers. Mm -hmm. They were using weapons, using the blood bloodline rules. So before then, we'll talk about it before because we're obviously going to get to like people starting to show up. So just before that, yep. Um, really good, really solid. Probably, probably their, yeah. I, I can't really remember if it was better or worse than up until that point. I mean, overall, I liked it better, obviously sure, because right. of the cheat codes right. used. But the match itself, um, but how I thought, does it compare to the year before? I thought, I thought, I thought they went. I, I thought, I thought the guys went. Listen, I think Roman and Cody have just an insane chemistry uh, in the ring with each other. They, they. They know each other like the back of their hands. Even mm -hmm. before last year, they've had their matches. It was the Shield Rhodes Brothers feud. Um, a lot of history between them. You put those two in the ring, whether there's interferences or not, magic is going to happen. And I think that that's exactly what they made on mm -hmm. Sunday night before all the shenanigans and stuff. And that just added to it. Yeah. So that was my my thoughts. Alex, what do you think? Man, the energy going into this main event was something so special to be in the crowd mm -hmm, for. Mm -hmm. Like, it felt like this was his last chance. It felt like bottom yeah. of the ninth, bases loaded, like scores tied, and this was Cody up at bat trying to hit that home run. His entrance Yankees reference. with the mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm going to ignore his that. His entrance with the mask, dude. <laughs> it was just now, it was just, now, it was just Bayesian saying things specific as baseball <laughs> <laughs> home run all right we get it you like the right, right. Jeter up and bat Aaron Judge <laughs> fuck there Jim I'm kidding <laughs> crazy but like but the entrance was so cool like the mask that Cody wore and we joked about oh. it in the press conference where his his tattoo just got so big that it just yeah. hit his head <laughs> Randy crazy. Rhodes coming out it was open mic night mm -hmm. like everything about that entrance felt so cool even Roman's entrance with the entire like choir mm -hmm. orchestra yep. was surreal big shout out to Mega Ran and Teak who are a part mm. of the Roman Reigns entrance, yeah. they did that all in like 40 minutes and then just got it together, which was insane to think about. But that match, like the energy going into that match, I will say was so much better than last year's match. The beginning of this match was good. They were spamming finishers like yep. 2K. Mm -hmm. It was wild. <laughs> it was so wild. But yeah, and then it was it was a good solid match. But then when like the fuckery happened, like the shenanigans were coming up, like you had Jimmy come level. out, then Jay, just like insane, just all the pop. It was a pop fest, really, just pops galore. Uh, it was, it was a wild, wild experience. Cena coming out, Taker, Rock, mm -hmm. like God. Yeah, but we uh, yeah, it was it was just. Throughout the weekend, you know, you, you ask the same question everyone you see. Yes, Cody Roman. Cody Roman. Mm. And you, I kept laughing at the answer yeah. you would give people where you said. Oh, if he, we, if he loses, he might as well we, quit yeah, and get a day job or something like we, that. We'd both go, Cody, Cody. And you would, you would go, if Cody loses, he's got he's to gotta pack his bags and go find a new job. Yeah, yeah find an office job. I mean, he has nice suits so he can start, you know, God, maybe working like, in finance on Wall Street or something like that. Because at that point, I mean, you lose two years in a row. You got no confidence right, in the guy. Right. Who, I wasn't, I wasn't disagreeing. No one's going to believe. Uh, um, no, no one's going to think he can beat him after that. That. So the shenanigans here, 
both Usos show up. Yep. They're fighting each other up the ramp. <laughs> Arguably had a better match that, than they did when the bell that, rang. That, that spear um, off the yeah. stage the was better, off than, anything, the ramp was better than anything from their first match. Solo Sokoa comes down, hits Cody with a, with a spike spear combo. John Cena comes out, takes out Solo. We're telling a story here. Mm. The Rock comes out, takes out Cena. Their stare down. Unreal, unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And then the Shields music hits. Seth comes out of nowhere. Boom. Instantly taken out. Mm-hmm. Dead. No Dean. Uh, he's in the shield gear and everything. Then. And I lost my... F- As everyone else did. I'm not saying anything special. I lost my fucking mind mm. when that <laughs> gong hit and the lights go out and Mark Calloway... Yeah. I don't think that was The Undertaker. <laughs> that was not The Undertaker. That was <laughs> Mark. Mark Calloway was Mark. shows up in the ring, takes out The Rock, and then... Uh, Roman is left with a decision. He's got the chair. Mm-hmm. Cody's back is turned. Seth's back is turned. Who's he going to take out? Was it 10 years later? 10 years later. 10 years later. Yeah. He's still pissed off. He's the petty king. PTSD. Gets his revenge. Hits Seth in the back with the chair. This would end up leading to Cody. Three of the most emotional crossroads you'll ever see in your life. Pins the world champion. Everyone comes down to the ring, Beautiful. celebrates, blah, blah, blah. Gives his belt to his um, mom, all that. Ugh. Unbelievable. It, I, I don't know. It Alex, I want to hear from you, but unreal. Cinema. Man, the story that they've been telling with Seth and Roman for the past 10 mm. years, just incredible stuff dude incredible stuff eventually when roman comes back seth is back to i need them to run it thousand percent again thousand percent like they are one thousand percent they are like the joker to batman Lex Mm -hmm. Luthor to superman like however you want to identify it like it's it's that grudge that roman's always had like it's the lore of it all and that's what i like about it is that he chose to attack Seth in that moment, and especially coming down as the shield. And if you remember on a Monday Night Raw during a promo with Seth and Cody, Seth <coughs> said, I'll be your shield. Oh, mm-hmm. oh. Coming the out way that, they, that's poetic. they tied that that's in. Poetic, Beautiful. Man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dude. That was that was the... so, so good. Yeah. The way they just tied in just so much stuff shit. That they were doing. It was the. The yeah. long term storytelling just... means something nowadays. Yeah. That's that that's what I think I love the most yeah. is that yeah. we're yeah. able to draw back from something that happened ten years ago. And like you said, that little sound bite from that promo, like I can be your shield. Him showing up the, as the shield, at first it was like, wait a minute, what what's going on here? But then it, you look back, it's like, Oh, that's why it makes sense. Roman, instead of taking out Cody <clears throat> and and you know, saving his championship, he was like, This isn't happening again. I'm taking you out and Seth Rollins is the reason, I mean, is a big reason why he doesn't have the belt mm. anymore. So it's like people people were talking yeah. about, and they always argue, like, who is Roman Reigns' greatest rival, especially after this weekend? Like, is Cody Roman's greatest rival? Is it Brock? Is it, you know, whoever, like, that he's had multiple, multiple matches with? I know they haven't really had many encounters, one-on-one matches in the last few years, but, man, it's hard to say that Roman and Seth, like, that's the feud that is roman's greatest rivalry I think especially once they get into this like real feud I and think that's gonna be because like solidified. like you said alex like when roman comes back and when seth comes back because we're figuring seth is going to take some time off mm. they please, have please to. heal please heal your please, body yeah please heal your body you deserve a break but these two need to go at it whether it's like a summer yeah. slam or it could be a random episode of smackdown and i'll still tune i, I would still be hyped up for it but they need to run that match <laughs> has to happen I um I think they did a really good yeah. job. You know they they one hundred percent need to. No, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just gonna say like they one hundred percent need to like run that back, especially when they did it uh at the Royal Rumble and they did that again mm-hmm. when he came out through the crowd. Man, like they need to they need to run it back. And even though like they haven't faced off enough, I think that's what makes it fresh, right? Yep, is mm-hmm. that they haven't mm-hmm. faced off one on one a lot and so that's what makes it special when they come back together and do that because roman was the one that got hit by seth 
So for him to hit Seth and get that revenge and like for a moment, just get in his own feelings, right? He got yep. emotional about the match. And this is the first time I think we've seen Roman Reigns actually like sink out of the tribal chief mm, mindset and just sure. got way too personal. Like he got into his own head within that moment. And I do have to say, like, I want to bring up Taker coming out because in the press box, we were all like, glass shatter, glass shatter, because we all expected right. Stone Cold yep. Steve Austin to come out. Would that mm -hmm. have been amazing? Oh, absolutely. But yeah. I think the swerve of the gong is what made all of us just be like, what? And yep. big shout to The Rock for selling that choke slam, dude. Like, he still got it, his facial yep. expressions, <laughs> yeah. as he was, like, going up. That was so high up when he did that. But, man, just overall, like, Cena coming out. Cena was just naked at the Oscars, like, a few weeks ago. <laughs> He's coming back to WrestleMania 40. Like, mm -hmm. just everything about that. It has to be, hands down, one of the best WrestleMania main events in the last decade. Maybe two decades. Yeah, maybe. sure. And, like, like selfishly... <laughs> You know, just just from when I was watching and, and, you know, how old we are, whatever. I'm way more an Undertaker fan than I am a Stone Cold and The Rock fan. Like, I just didn't – I didn't grow up with Stone Cold The Rock. I have right. – I think I obviously have so much respect for them. I'm obviously huge fans of them both being a wrestling history fan. But at the end of the day, if, I, if I'm choosing would I rather hear a gong or would I rather hear glass shattering or an if you smell – I'm choosing Undertaker. I really am. So it's like that moment for me hearing that fucking gong. It was I like I said, I lost my mind. Yeah. That's my go. I think too, it's like yeah. everyone was expecting Stone Cold. I mean, it was just And that would have like, been nuts. And that would have been nuts. But it like, would have been I great. Think because everyone was yeah. expecting Stone Cold, like the fact that we heard the gong instead mm -hmm. just was like, wait, what the fuck? Why is he here? <laughs> and also, if we want to just like bring like logic into it and stuff it's like yeah stone cold, that. <laughs> no, it's like what does like stone cold doesn't have anything to do with the bloodline story yeah he has a, mm. like him and the rock one of the greatest rivalries of all time but at the end of the day it's like undertaker mm. and roman have a history roman right. beat undertaker at wrestlemania and like it's wrestlemania 40 it's like one of the that's always the 10 year thing they always do something big it's like and one thing i saw is undertaker is like one of the only guys like that's from the original like single digit mania. So like Undertaker's kind of like wow. not Mr. WrestleMania. I know we give that nickname to Sean, but like Undertaker hey. is like, you know, you think of WrestleMania, you think of Undertaker. So the fact that he was there, I think it made it made more sense. Um and it just again, the surprise of it being him and not Stone Cold made it a million times better. A million times better. My uh my my last thing before we move on to the Raw segment, unless anyone else has uh, any more by all means. But I think they did a really, you know, kind of what both of you have mentioned, but I think they had a, they did a really good job of like, we all thought this was the finish of the story. It's the, mm -hmm. it's the, it's a conclusion to a Cody Rhodes story. Yep. But I think a lot of um, skepticism going into it was good. was like, well, what's next? Yep. Once the bloodline story is mm -hmm. over, once Roman loses, what's next? What's next for Cody? Like, this is the hottest story in years. Sure. Where do they mm -hmm. go from here? I think they did a phenomenal job of one. Now we have, we talked about earlier, the Cody rock story 100%. is huge. Yep. Whether it's at SummerSlam or whatever, that's massive coming out of it. Then you also have what I think we realized is like this might, this whole story. I think this was a chapter in the Roman Seth story. If we're really zooming out, sure. this was a really, really good yeah. chapter. And maybe what is, when you look you know back at their history, you'll remember this moment. Right. A thousand percent. And it's yeah. like mm -hmm. Cody's sure. story was amazing. It's an amazing story. But at the end of the day, it did all tie back yeah. to, to full, Seth and Roman hate each other, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. um, which I think they did a really good job. And now the launch pad is like, we thought they had every direction to go months ago. The launch pad they have now. Woo. You can do they could so do much. Anything. And like, I also yeah. want to give flowers to Seth Rollins too. You know, Cody yeah. Rhodes had his moment. I think MVP of the weekend, man. Seth Rollins, main <laughs> eventing, uh, main eventing night one, uh, opening up night two. He 
sacrificed himself to help Cody. God's ass, kicked, his, all God's ass kicked all weekend, <laughs> but like it was for the greater good. It was for the greater good. Like it he was. lost the world championship, gave Drew his flowers. Like you fucking deserve it. He said to him, mm-hmm. and at the end of the day, again, like he was a huge reason, if not the reason, why Roman lost the championship on Sunday because, you know, he wanted the bloodline to end. He had to bring it down, and that's that's how he had to do it. So yeah. Seth Rollins MVP of the weekend in my eyes. All right, we good. Good to move on 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 Raw. Anyone else? Any any more notes on the main event? Good, good, good. I think Hell so, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, to kind of to kind of finish up this whole story of the weekend, then we're gonna bounce back to Mania, cover the matches. But The Rock confronts Cody Rhodes on Raw. Uh, the Rock asks. <laughs> the... <laughs> it's even funny reading it. The Rock asks Cody to hold. <laughs> this... the... the Rock asks to hold Cody's title. Cody says, awkward. only if I can hold yours. That, though, when the crowd started saying, this is awkward, I was like, okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one thinking this You know right what? Now I, I liked this. I didn't think... I, I, I understand I where th- you are coming from, but I liked how, like... I thought it was, like... I thought it was... I took away that it was eerie. I thought sure. it was eerie and kind of, like, The way The Rock villainy. was talking and I didn't was, like, think slow, it was awkward. Maniacal. I mean, yes, the whole, like... The, the whole, like... All you know, I'll hold yours if you hold mine is like silly, mm-hmm. absolutely. But like, no, I my takeaway was like, uh, was like I thought it was like you know, let me let me hold that, let me. I thought it was yeah, eerie. no, I, I thought, thought it, I mean I was still cool with it and everything. It was just like, huh, what are they trying to do here? Oh. <laughs> what what is going on right now? They they do end up swapping belts. <laughs> uh, the, mm, Rock just thanks feels right. Mm. Rock thanks Cody. Blah blah blah. Uh, the Rock warns Cody that when he comes back, he's coming back for him. Cody says he's looking forward to it. Um, they really played on the fact that The Rock is on the board at TKO and is Cody's boss. Cody says, you know, I'm your champion, yep. mm-hmm. boss. And then The Rock, yeah. uh, which before before the footage was was like the hottest talked about thing, yep. you know? The Rock hands him something. He says, don't break my heart again. Yes, he did. Put out your hand. He hands him something. We don't know what that is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a lot of things coming out of this one, like we were saying, Rock, Cody, probably SummerSlam. Either way, that's the feud. Rock's probably going to take some time off. Yeah. Big comeback, big big pop when he comes back. What did he place in Cody's hand? We need uh, theories. What? I guess I guess that's the question. I don't yeah. know. Do we have any? Do we have any thoughts, Alex, opinions on what he put in Cody's what's hand? What's your conspiracy theory for this? Because <laughs> I know we're not going to find out about this for a few oh, months. Right. I feel like so. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, a Black Adam movie ticket, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's, that, 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 that would have been a scary gift been, to give. Man. It could have been anything. <laughs> People were saying a condom. People were saying like, a blue <laughs> That's chew crazy. deal or something. A blue chew. Like, okay. It was wild. Some God. dude wipes. <laughs> if, only, if only we had a sponsor for this episode. Like, we don't have a sponsor. What is this? Yeah, I oh, I've seen man. a few things on Twitter <laughs> as well. I, I've seen a few I've seen a few different things on Twitter. People were saying it could have been one of Roman's beads from his necklace. Mm. Some people were saying it was um some people were saying it was a watch or something like that. Like the um I think that's my lead. I think it might be the Rolex. But like I don't think so people were saying the the watch that the Rolex, but mm. they were all saying the the watch that uh Dusty Pond or whatever, but he was wearing it during the press conference oh, afterwards yeah. and like he admitted that oh. he was already given to him so that wouldn't really make sense it could be the rolex i also saw now this is alex i you have to excuse me sometimes we do the podcast i put on my aluminum foil hat and i just get into my conspiracy theorist mode and my fantasy booking so just bear with me so if you guys may remember (laughs) it was it was a few days before mania uh cody's bus uh went up in flames okay obviously it happened in real life. Everyone was good. Thank God nothing serious came out of it. Some people are saying that he handed Cody a lighter and was like, I've, I mean, because yeah, if you want to yeah. tie it in to like the storyline, you really could run with it because yeah. obviously no one was hurt. It's obviously something that you can brush past, like nothing serious happened. But like some people are saying that and I'm like, damn, if they actually are like the rock tried to kill him before mania and try to do all that shit, that's kind of crazy. I'm not I don't know if I believe it, but like I did think I, like I got it, a be- I got a better one for you. Please tell me I got a better one for you. It was a it was a USB drive. You know what was on that USB? 
all in footage. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh it was from no, not um, not that fight. It was from um, the scrum uh, when uh, the first one, the first ever one. Oh, the um, whatever. Who got in a fight that first one? Yeah, brawl, brawl out. That's what it yeah, was. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah man. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of different. <laughs> man. I saw that someone said it was the seven dollars that The Rock started out with Stop. in his career. <laughs> Stop! Yeah, people are really just uh, going crazy with this. Again, I I think it's cool because we're not going to find out what right. this is until The Rock comes back, which I think is people mm -hmm. are going to be guessing, speculating what it is for for however long he's gone. Um, it could be it could be anything. I also, mean, it's a small thing. I, I mean, think, it was just I think a handshake. What, we're over, what everyone's overlooking too is like. What does don't break my heart mean? Right. <laughs> what do you right. mean don't break my heart again? What does that Maybe mean? Maybe like taking his WrestleMania main event away from him or something like that. I don't like know. Roman. I don't know. I don't know. And how could those two relate? I don't know. But it's, uh, I, I, I enjoyed it. It's a little cliffhanger for us. <laughs> um, 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 <clears throat> excuse me. All right. Uh, let's get back to Mania, huh? Mm -hmm. We got, we got, we are deep into this pod. We got a lot of matches to go over. We got we're gonna, now we're gonna kind of go back, kind of go chronological here. Rhea Ripley defeats Becky Lynch to retain the Women's World Championship. Mm -hmm. I thought this was a fantastic opener to the weekend. Um, I love the decision for Rhea to retain. I guess also you know I, not to sound like everyone else, but uh, you know it's been reported by everyone that Becky was fighting with a fever and yep. also strep throat. Absolutely. Um, yeah, really, really solid match. Oh, I loved Rhea's entrance. With, oh, um, yeah. Oh, what's the band's name? Uh, white Noise. Uh, no. What's it called? Motionless and White. Motionless, Motionless and White. And white. white Noise. Okay. <laughs> white Noise. Um, yeah. That's Seamus' finisher. Uh, <laughs> yeah, unreal entrance from the two. I loved how, how into it like like she was. If everything felt huge, yep. I think felt Rhea winning was great. She uh, like Her beating Becky, I think, just put her up that next level that I think she needed to go. Hey man, I'm telling you. That's that's, that's kind of my I, that's kind of my takeaway. I think she needs to carry the belt to Mania next year. I really don't think that she mm. should lose the belt anytime soon. You're we're in the we're in the midst of creating one of the most dominant just female wrestlers uh not even of our time of all time. The aura around <laughs> her is unbelievable. She's T she's at the very top of the mountain of the women's division, and I don't think she should be stopped. I don't think she should be taken down for a little bit. Yeah. Um, whoever it is that takes her down, we'll see. But I, I really think that she should just continue to dominate and just take down everyone until Mania next year. Mm. Yeah. What do you think, Alex? Man, that was the perfect opening match, I felt. Mm -hmm. Like, that was the match to open up the entire weekend for sure. Uh, the motionless and white entrance was so solid. Like I remember reading Rhea Ripley. That was like Rhea Ripley's favorite band when she was in high school. And there's a photo of her. I think she's like 16 meeting the lead singer. And then years oh, later wow, cool. for her to perform at WrestleMania 40, like to perform and like the entrance with your favorite band. Like we've all thought of that, you know, like we've all right. had that <laughs> moment of like coming out WrestleMania and our favorite bands are like right. playing us out. Like she had coming that out moment. to Nickelback. It felt oh. like a concert. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Creed. I want to uh, be a rock star. <laughs> but <laughs> but she like she was into it. Like it was cool to see how much she was into it, singing along with her theme song, walking out. The makeup was cool. The gear was great on her and Becky. It was a solid back and forth. But again, like love Becky. Think that she also needs a break as well. But as as mm -hmm. the same as Seth. But I think like Rhea is the star right now in that entire company and to dip into monday night raw a little bit her and Liv morgan if they're building that up i'm here for it Love i'm that. so Money. here for yeah. that feud that they're building up for that yeah and also like the cinematography on monday night raw when Liv Ooh. attacked Rhea, and then dom was like get out of here and then they panned over into the the arena man what they're doing awesome. with the camera mm -hmm. work on monday night raw all over is so so good but yeah Rhea versus becky was was a solid solid match uh for for night one i would maybe say that's one of the best matches of night one i still have to watch back because the main event was just amazing but that yeah. was probably like second best match of that night 
Yeah, I would say I think I mean I think the general consensus, and I agree with with it, is a night two kick night one's ass. I think night two is so stacked. Uh, not take any anything away from the match on night yeah. one, yeah. but um, yeah, I can't say I can't say I disagree. Um, we'll go over to the six pack ladder match with. Excuse me. Uh, they finally split the titles. Thank they did God. it. They did the oh, damn thing. Finally, Waller and Theory win the SmackDown titles, kind of seemingly out of nowhere. Yeah, All of a sudden it was, that was kind of anticlimactic, but at I the liked, same I time, it's how, like, like get those belts out of the way and save the big moment. Yeah, for I, li- gets I like the how it's kind of like, oh shit, it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and then awesome truth, huge feel good moment. Oh. Truth is up there. He's the one to grab the titles. Miz runs up, gives him a hug. Conquered his fear of climbing ladders. <laughs> yeah. Finally, oh, um, amazing. Awesome yeah. Truth wins the Raw <laughs> Tag Team titles. He got the hot tag during the yeah, tag match. Oh, that, that, um, I, that was one of the highlights of the match for me. That was yeah. hilarious. Um, I thought this was fun. I mean, it was a it was a chaotic twelve men running around, yeah. jumping off shit. Um, very, very, very. I don't I, I don't have much to say about it. Other than, like everyone, everyone looked really good. I'm excited to see where guys like New Catch Republic go from here. Mm-hmm. I think Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn. Um, mm-hmm. were, were, were big standouts. Everyone had a good showing, I um, think, yeah. Yeah, and D- DIY, too. I get a lot of... I'm not not the biggest DIY fan, but DIY looked great. That DDT that Johnny hit through the table oh, to yeah. the outside. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, everyone everyone had a damn showing, I'll tell you that. Whoever else wants to, oh, wants to oh, talk, I, was, I don't know. Oh, I was just kind of waiting. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, it was a solid match. It was a fun match. Uh, I felt like it was anticlimactic for Grayson Waller and Austin Theory, just because like they mm-hmm. got the belts and their theme song didn't play, and it was just like, oh, all right, yeah. get out of here, you guys won. Let's continue the match. You know, like it was like okay. Oh, it was like it was like weird rules of like finally separated those titles. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. like it was like weird rules like one once they like won the titles, I was like commentary was like, but they can they can get the other ones if they want. Like, God, like, that no. was like a weird moment of like I wasn't sure what what they were gonna do and I think they, they played off it well, but it was kinda like I thought it was win. funny too when he like got pushed off into the ladder and he had the belt uh Waller had the belt on his shoulder still mm-hmm. and he just went through with that. I thought that was a really funny shot. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right, we'll go. Andrade and Rey Mysterio defeat Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio with the help of what? Which Kelsey? Jason. Jason Kelsey. Jason that. Kelsey and Ranger um, Johnson. Jason Kelsey and the other Eagles player. <laughs> uh, and this was fun. Uh, I th- this is kind of what I felt like it was going to be going in. I thought it was going to be. It's an uh, I, I didn't expect so many shenanigans, but, like, this makes sense for this to be, like, the one that the stars are in. They sure. get the football players in. Mm-hmm. Um, Rey Mysterio and Andrade, mm-hmm. super babyface win. Um, this was fun. I mean, I, you know, I'm a Rey Mysterio diehard, so I, you know, it was cool cool for me to see Rey Mysterio at WrestleMania 40. Uh, I loved the, the the double on their shoulders dive oh, from, yeah. the, from the, from the yeah, top. A lot of cool spots. Um, um I forget what his name was, but when he they launched him off the ring rope and he went flying, he out went and soaring. The, so cool. Mm-hmm. That's one of that's one of the coolest spots. They did it a few weeks oh, or months ago at NXT, uh... I think, too. So I forget what his name was. I forget which one it is. You get Joaquin you... Wild. Yes. Whoa! Yes, I was gonna say you get was. a point if you get Is it. That his name? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I yeah. think so. Yeah, yeah. Awesome spot. <laughs> Give me that. Belt. I pers- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I personally think like I mean I picked Dom and um and Escobar to win because I just kind of looked at it, like last year Ray got the win. Mm. This year it can be like Dom gets his gets his look back. So it's like one one in the series, and like then eventually you can lead to a third match. Now it's like well Ray got two wins on his son, so like why does Dom need a third one? Um, yeah. But hey, listen, seeing Ray win, never going to complain about that. Um, it was funny shenanigans. Jason Kelsey and uh, Lane Johnson had the the Mysterio Eagles match <laughs> on, so that was that was pretty fitting. But yeah, no, I thought it was a fun match. And what do we uh, what do we got after that? Uh, Jay Uso defeats Jimmy Uso. Uh, yeah, I. I watched the. I ended up watching most of the weekend back at this point. I'm saving to watch the main event um, with my dad 
that's cute. Oh, oh my god. Um, Aww. but. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, people. I I also have a ha- uh, not a habit, but like I uh, I have a hard time distinguishing what's a it, unless a match is like really bad and obviously bad. I have a hard time distinguishing what's like a good match and a bad match sure. if I'm watching That's it live. Subjective you know what I mean? Stuff. Right? Well, yeah, objective, but like more mm-hmm. more so just like being it's live. Different I mean, it's just being so different. there and watching on TV. Um, yeah, I get that. I didn't dislike this as much as most people. But I do get the super kicks criticism. I don't think it was as good as expectations lended it to be. Um, but I don't have a big takeaway from it, to be honest. Yeah. What do you think, Alex? It was it was a match. It was good. Yeah. You know? It's hard to determine. You're right. It's hard to determine what's a good match and a bad match, especially when you're there live, just because, like, the energy of it, you know? It's WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. We're all just excited to be there. Uh, night one. I'm not too sure because it was cold as hell. I wouldn't yeah. know. I was warm in the press box. <laughs> <laughs> um, Eating your blueberry cheesecake. <laughs> yeah, I was living the life, man. Eating my glizzies <laughs> as well. But <laughs> I, I, same. But, I, same. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, it was a match. I thought it was a good match. I think it like determined my thing going into WrestleMania was where, what night this match was going to take place because I thought it was probably going to determine like what the outcome was going to be for the main events happening. Mm -hmm. I think Jay winning it on night one was a good indication that maybe Cody was definitely going to win it night two. It was pretty obvious that, you know, night two or night one uh rock and roman were gonna win because it's rock of course he's gonna win mm-hmm. uh but even with that prediction it was still a fun a fun match but the jay and jimmy match i just couldn't help but to think of like you know bret hart versus owen hart wrestlemania 10 you know like that was that's the brother like vibes that i was getting from that match and so i like the video package also going into like depth of like the history of it Mm -hmm. of course the bloodline it runs deep it's a great story but like jimmy and jay when it's like twin brothers it's one thing i am not my brother's keeper Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. dude like i thought it was i thought it was good i thought it was solid it was a fun match overall you know no complaints i think my my biggest takeaway and i think this is a lot of people were saying even before, like, I, I think this match needed a stipulation. I, I think it would have been that. like, if it was like a street fight mm-hmm. or something like that, like, cause it was, I wish they told more of a story in the match. Like we know the history of them. They didn't really need a whole lot of time to build this up. We know that they're twins. We know that they're <laughs> one of the greatest tag teams of all time. And there's this bad blood, like family issues and stuff now. But it's like, to me, I just, felt like i was just watching them do the same thing for 10 minutes just super kick super kick super kick and it's like i get it and like they had the thing like i'm sorry i'm sorry and then mm-hmm. he did that thing like that was the best part of the match because like yeah. he told something there i just think it needed that little extra like if there were weapons involved and they were still doing all that i think sure. i would be like okay this is a little bit this is better it's more like you know they hate each other type of thing but I don't know. I just, I, and I had my concerns going into the match too. I know we talked about this. Like Jimmy isn't a singles wrestler. Like I know he's been solo for a little bit, but he hasn't really proven himself. No, no, solo's the, the, the yeah, yeah, he's been a singles competitor for, (laughs) uh, for a little bit now, but he hasn't really like proven himself as one. And Jay, obviously he has and all that, but I just didn't know how they were going to, what the chemistry was going to be like yeah. at Mania. And I'm not saying it was the worst match I've ever seen. I just think it could have been a lot better. That That's more of where I stand. So Dante said it was the worst match he's ever seen. <laughs> <We'll> <laughs> Quote, me, to, on Quote um, me on it. Quote me on it. Jade Cargill, <laughs> Naomi, <clears throat> and Bianca Belair defeat Damage Control. Welcome to the Jade Ooh, Show. We're in the um, eye of the storm, baby. I think, I think both entrances were great. The Damage Control entrance was really sick. Everyone looked super cool. But... The elevated stage with Jade, Naomi, and Bianca Fire. coming down, and then each doing their own thing. Yep. Um, Fire. They look great. The three of them look great together. It's just, it's just, we're we're building up this Jade momentum, and I think this was this was a really really good showing, kind of like a not proving she's a star, but just like I don't even know what word I'm trying to say, like reconfirming or i don't know just seeing Remind, her on stage yeah, reminding like, everyone it, it, you saw that she belonged yeah. there i guess what i'm trying to say 100%. you know no she definitely didn't feel out of place mm-hmm. in that match that's for damn sure 
her between her entrance her gear just everything about her i mean she had the aura in aew and it's carrying over yeah. to wwe she is a star so i'm i'm super excited to see like where she ends up i know we didn't talk about this, but like the drafts in a few weeks so, like you know where is she gonna end up there um who she's gonna go after her first real feud i'm very excited to see what they do with jade a very very strong start for her yeah yeah that entrance might have been my favorite entrance of the weekend for sure it was like, sick on that elevated stage and I think Sean Ross Sapp tweeted out where superheroes look like Jade Cargill. She doesn't look like a superhero. <laughs> like superheroes wow. strive to look like her. And I it's like absolutely true. 100%. Um, it's like she's arrived. You know what I mean? And I think with Jade, it, it's no diss to AEW. Listen, I like AEW. I think AEW should definitely belongs in this space because competition is good. Alternatives are always good when it comes to like fans just wanting something different. But she is light years better in this in WWE than she was in AEW. And I think like sure she's only had like if you're including raw she's only had what like three matches but still like she looks mm. really really good she looks much more comfortable in the ring especially at wrestlemania especially at wrestlemania dude like mm, you know yeah. you're performing at wrestlemania you're performing in one of the biggest stages of this entire industry and you're coming out looking like that just solid across the board i think dakota kai uh oscar Kyrie played some good roles too because it was like there wasn't much of a story going into this but i think it was still a solid match for the length that they they all got you know um i think with naomi and bianca again the story that they were telling too where bianca's like y'all don't understand the like wreckage that these girls have been <laughs> giving us throughout the entire you know roster naomi's coming in she doesn't really understand but she used to be cool with bailey uh and then jade is like fresh into it as well just to kind of conquer it and take these girls down i thought overall it was a really really fun match again like wrestlemania just full of fun matches especially when you're there yep. live yeah. you're not like being like well this match is three stars two stars <laughs> no like you're there to enjoy the entire show you know what i mean yeah. like you're not about to like update the cage match.com rankings or anything like that. Like you're just there right. to have a good time. And that was definitely like a match that proved it again. Like the gear going into it was phenomenal. And even in the press conference, I was there and the energy that they brought into the press conference was just exquisite. Like it was just high energy, good vibes all across the board, talking about the representation that they were aware of that they brought mm -hmm. and they, they displayed at WrestleMania was just amazing. Just amazing all across the board. I can't wait to see what's going to go down with Jade in the future, especially with the draft coming through. Uh, again, with Bianca and Naomi, I'd love to see them in an official tag team, possibly sick, winning yeah. the, those tag team titles as well. But it was solid. Solid all across the board. Oh, yeah. My one... Uh... My, my one thing, it doesn't really have anything to do with the match. I don't think this was the match to do it anyway. But, man, I hope Asuka breaks this WrestleMania losing streak. Um, mm. She's like 0-6 oh. or yeah. some shit, whatever it is. They had to preserve yeah. Bianca's you know? winning streak. Again, this wasn't, this wasn't the match. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't the story right. there. Um, but, like, next year, let's get an Asuka dub, huh? <laughs> can, we, can we please, Definitely for the love of God? Um, we'll move on to Sami Zayn defeating Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. So can't, I can't believe it. Um, so this really was can. maybe uh, genuinely, because I think, I think you could argue that, like, you didn't really know if Cody was winning, but it was like, I think you could argue this This might have been the most, sh well, I guess, okay, <laughs> besides the Avengers showing up, <laughs> this was maybe the most shocking result <laughs> yeah. of a match. No, I, I, think, um, I think it was, to be I, honest. This you. was so good. I, Even Gunther hitting a fucking halluva kick, the brain buster mm -hmm. by Sammy, Gunther climbing up to the top three times mm -hmm. to put him away, the cockiness Gunther was showing towards uh, uh, Sammy's wife, mm -hmm. the back, we'll talk about the camera stuff, backstage with Sammy. And, and and his wife and kid and then the camera following him to Kevin Owens yeah. and just everything. I love this match. I this, just this was this might have been my favorite of the night one. It's up maybe. There. 
It's up there. Um, I, it's yeah. one of my favorite of the weekend. Hundred percent. I think this was this was the match that it mm-hmm. it was time for Gunther to quote unquote graduate to the next level. Yeah. Um, Sammy, you know, mm-hmm. obviously everyone can be, and we are fully in that camp. We love Chad Gable. Right. Chad's getting his match with Sammy, which yes, is going to be is. crazy. I think Sammy, especially throughout the match, told the story and built up the underdog thing, and like even when he's in the match and he's on the ground, he's punching the he's shit fighting yeah like, all the emotion like, even if you weren't fully in like oh, i don't know if sammy's the underdog i don't know if sammy should be in this match he he turned everyone around in that match i think got everyone where they needed to be for the story and i just i think it was excellent i think everything about it was so 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 good i mean i i love the match i i said i think it's one of my favorite matches of the weekend probably my top three i i mean i genuinely thought Gunther was gonna win. I, yeah. I mean, the whole underdogs. I'm, I'm happy Sammy won. I love the underdog story. I love the whole fight. His wife was there cheering him on. She was there at Elimination Chamber last year when he lost to Roman. So it was like kind of like a full circle in that case. Like he can't lose in front of his wife two years in a row. Come on, he's putting her through enough. I think, <laughs> and I also just thought like Gunther had the belt for what 666 days was the final count. Angel I numbers for sure. Really, I written, yeah, Angel numbers for sure. I was really convinced that he was going to be carrying the belt into like all these um you know these international pay-per-views coming up. Um I really thought that I mean also like me I just fancy booking got the best of me. I always thought like Ilya was going to get called sure. up and then that would have been the guy to throw him because I know they have such a strong history. I was always in the camp of Gable having that spot too. Um so maybe I was just surprised that you know, because this whole Sammy being introduced to it was kind of recent. Like, he won the gauntlet a few weeks ago, and the story wasn't really built around him beating Gunther. It was Chad having that underdog story. Mm-hmm. So, I just didn't think that the stars were aligned for Sammy to win. But, hey, man, that's why an underdog story is amazing. He is the true underdog. The brain buster was <laughs> uh, was sick. Um, looking I, Live, it was awesome. Looking back on it, it's like, holy shit, I can't believe they pulled that off. Because you asked, uh, uh, refocus and find balance in your life is 666. Oh, so. uh, well, now Gunther is going to refocus and find uh-huh. balance in the World Heavyweight Championship picture. Because if, if Gunther lo- if he lost the belt, man, he is 100% getting into that World Heavyweight Championship picture. He's got to be world champion by the end of this year. At the very latest, it's got to happen. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts. Alex, what, do you, uh, what are your takeaways from this match? I totally forgot this match was night one, so I take back what I said with Rhea and Becky. Oh, there you go. There you go. This is the match of the night, man. Like, the energy going into this was great, man. Like, I was definitely the one of, like, it should have been Chad Gable. Because the program that they were telling over the summer on Monday Night Raw between him and Gunther, like, it just made sense. So adding, like, Sami Zayn last minute, so it felt like last minute. Yep. was like, okay, I understand. You need to have something for, for Sammy, for WrestleMania. He main evented night one last year. He won the tag right. titles. Like, you need to give him something, you know? Um, I love that Sammy Zayn is a wife guy. That's my favorite thing in the world, <laughs> that he's a wife guy. Uh, and so, and I, and, you know, he's a wife guy to his actual wife and then his uh, work wife, which is Kevin Owens. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I thought, I thought it was brilliant. Like I, I got hyped up uh, when he saw Kevin and like he, Kevin yeah. like slapped him in the face. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm into this. Yeah, 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 of course I'm into this. Um, but yeah, like I think. This was the mania of streaks like ending and I'm fine yeah. with it. And Gunther losing yeah. it was was good because it's like, OK, if we're entering this new era, so to say, like they've been saying the renaissance era of WWE, we need to move Gunther up to that main title scene, right. whether mm-hmm. it's, you know, him versus Cody. I don't think Cody's losing that title anytime soon, no. but yep. him versus Drew winning that title, going into the Berlin show. Definitely. Uh, I agree with you where like Ilya Dragunov was is a perfect opponent for Gunther. I think going into that Berlin show, that could be his opponent for that one. Um, But Sammy getting it at the end was like emotional. It was like, okay, yeah, yeah, like he he's here. I don't necessarily think that he needs the Intercontinental Championship, but I think that Sammy could be a good transitional champion for Chad Gable if he wins it. I think Chad Gable would be an excellent 
intercontinental champion but what gunther did to that title he rejuvenated it because back in the day yeah. the ic title was the title that you throw on to the guy that is going to be the guy later on in in the company <laughs> right he's going to be the yeah. main event guy and that's what gunther proved uh with that title and i thought it was great the turnbuckle brain buster <laughs> the scream i let out <laughs> when he did that i was like you gotta be kidding me that was a professional wrestling match oh yeah if there was mm -hmm. any throughout that entire weekend there was no sports entertainment it was brutal <laughs> no. it was gritty like i loved loved that match drew mcintyre defeat seth rollins for the world heavyweight championship and yep. we'll stop there and we're gonna stop there for a second we're gonna stop there because <laughs> that's all that happened well no i i'm else, not even hey, else i have about. a i hey i i got a, i got a surprising turn of character for this pod oh what the hell? um but this match was so good i a, a great start to night two. Oh, night yeah. night two was a ball comes out with the claymore we think mm -hmm. we're gonna get like the 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 oh shit quick yep. pin yeah that set the crowd on fire mm -hmm. also with that said i want to take a moment to defend the philly crowd because night one and we talked talk about how cold it was night one it was cold it we was... didn't want to stand up and we were just no one no one was prepared no one dressed appropriately nope, nope. they didn't night get the two, memo you, and you were saying all weekend it's crazy what 10 degrees can do to a crowd 10 degrees is um, a, that's the magic number right there so i just want to make sure i want to make sure we stood up for, yeah. for, yeah. for the crowd we were in it was a great crowd um, night two <laughs> uh blue night went out of the water and we we um what what's the word i'm thinking of we uh we defend not defended ourselves we uh bounced back from a night one Go we showed there right. was a crazy crowd for night two yeah. um so yeah like i said uh 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 Big pop for, uh, sorry, big props to Seth Rollins, you said earlier for this weekend in general. Yep. Um, really happy Drew finally got his moment. Thank um, God. but yeah, what I, before the before the event that happened, uh, Alex, you start off. What'd you think about this match? What'd you think about this kickoff tonight, too? Man, this is the way to do it. This is the way to mm. do it. Listen, everyone needs to chill out on the Philly crowd. We experienced an earthquake Preach. out of nowhere. Preach. Dude, like, we experienced an earthquake. No one was ready. Let me just say, what a rib that Monday and Tuesday, it was like 70 degrees in Philly. Mm. Yeah, what honestly. What an actual, right. honestly, actual yeah. rib on that, What a that, joke. Dude. Like, it was way too cold. It was windy. Like, no yeah. one was really prepared. I heard, I don't know if this is true, I heard that the merch stand sold out of blankets because everyone was I believe it. I, that. I believe it. it, which is rightfully mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I believe it as well. Um, but for this one, night two, a little reset for the crowd. This mm -hmm. is how you open it up. Everyone was highly anticipating this match. Um, uh, Seth Seth's entrance was great. <laughs> I so thought it was, it was. so, so yeah, silly. It was I thought really it was good. great. It reminded me of like Mardi Gras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was really great. Um, but this match was solid. The thing that took me out in the best way was when Drew went up to his wife, took the phone, and <laughs> tweeted in the middle of the match, bored at work, LOL. Man, he is Comedy. In, an incredible social media presence yeah. in yeah. that in that company. He I didn't even know he did that so until like we were good. in we we were in the car and you said it. You're like, Dude, I didn't even know he did. I looked on Twitter and you, I think you showed me too. Yeah, I was like, oh shit. It, and, then yeah. he, and then he quote tweeted it after he, he was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, definitely didn't fuck. notice it in the moment. <laughs> definitely didn't notice it. I loved this match because uh, starting off night two with an absolute bang, it reminded me a lot, a whole lot of Seth Rollins, Brock Lesnar when they opened up WrestleMania 35, just like getting the big match out of the way, just like, Big move after big move. I mean, did we see a move besides one of their signatures or finishers? <laughs> like, I don't, I can't recall. Um, curb stomps on the outside. Pedigrees on the outside. Look, four or five claymores it took. Um, it was just from from the moment the bell rang, with the when the with the close call to Drew finally getting that big win in front of fans. That five ten minutes was just mm -hmm. in incredible just the crowd was hot that's how you get the crowd going and just so so happy drew got that moment because it was four years um in the making he needed he needed to have that moment in front of the fans and i'm so i'm super happy that he did and then and then 
He's showboating in front of Punk. He's talking shit to Punk. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Does the suck it. Um, Punk takes him out. uh, Puts him on his back. Boom. Takes the brace off. Whacks him with the brace. Uh, Insane. Looks like he's ahead of schedule. Mm -hmm. Great. Awesome. Uh, Good for Punk. That sounds sarcastic. (laughs) (laughs) uh, Genuinely, I'm happy. Um, Yeah. and then, oh yeah, sorry, losing, lost track of my my notes here. Um, Judgment Day music hits. Mm. CM Punk does the classic, does the classic Look turn. Back. Nailed it. Damian <laughs> Priest comes down like a bat out of hell. Mm-hmm. Whacks him with the briefcase. Yep, I remember from classic. our seats, I saw that briefcase go fucking flying in the air. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Gets it. I'm cashing in. I'm cashing in. Yep. Cashes in. Hits Drew Hit with, I forget what his finisher is called, South of Heaven? I don't know. Yeah. The, whatever it's called. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Hits him with it. One, two, three. Damian Priest is your new world heavyweight champion. And something magical happened during that time, Dante. Yeah. What was it? I, in that moment. You became a Damian Priest fan? I became a Damian Priest fan. Hey, the, I am, the payoff. All, I get it. The payoff. I, in that moment, <laughs> I got it. I understand. I am, and I hate that it. I hate that it seems like um now that he's the champion. I'm hopping on the bandwagon, uh-huh. which I am. It's pro wrestling. <laughs> uh, I'm allowed to do that. You're supposed to do that. Uh, but I, in that moment, I became a Damian Priest fan. I was like, "Fuck yeah, that was awesome. Mm-hmm. That's what I needed. That, I yeah. just needed something cool." Yeah. And then he gave that to me, and I'm like, "Word, like I'm, I'm with you." I now, mean, you the, know, the payoff was so sick. The payoff was worth it. I mean, a lot of people obviously have been trolling have been complaining like why isn't he cashing in seth rollins has been out of action for months he's showing up with a bum knee why aren't you cashing in all this stuff with the roman seth being attacked even the monday before raw seth rollins gets gets yeah. beaten down it's like why is damien cashing in obviously business logic wise wwe doesn't want to make this a clusterfuck and mm-hmm. just like they're already telling a story here damien like we're making fun of him but like obviously he's they're not going to tie him into all this. There's already so much going on. But, man, I mean, you want to talk about the best place to do it? Uh, WrestleMania is the place to do it. I mean, it's just, you know, you're going to get that big pop. People were just like, people were just happy that it finally happened. It's like, oh, he yeah. finally, like, understood what the briefcase can do. You can cash it in for a championship match. Um, but super cool <laughs> moment. I mean, seeing the Judgment Day come out and them celebrating on the entrance ramp, too, was just like, you can see how happy they were for him. He's had the briefcase for, what, 280-something days? It's a long time. something years. So, um, yeah, 280 years or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, so the fact that he finally got his moment, uh, who knows how long he's going to have the belt for. That's that's another uh, topic. That's another discussion for another day. But as of this moment, uh, he's the world heavyweight champion, and I'm, I'm happy for him. He deserves it. Alex, with the Judgment Day themed uh, aura you got going on behind you, how do you feel about how do you feel about <laughs> Damien? <laughs> Listen, I'm Puerto Rican, and so when Damien <laughs> Priest cashed in, I went feral. I will say, <laughs> when Drew won, I was like, okay, qu- let me go to the bathroom real quick. <laughs> so I went to the bathroom. Oh no! And in the press box in the bathroom, they have yeah, yeah. yeah. So in the press box in the bathroom, they have the audio playing. And yep. I'm be nice. done with my business. I'm washing my hands. And then I hear Michael Cole saying, Damn it, Priest. I was like, chill. And I run <laughs> back to my seat. And I got there. I got I got to my seat when he was like giving the, the ref the briefcase. And he's like, I'm cashing oh, hell yeah. in. And in the hell press yeah. box, there's a there were a few Puerto Rican outlets uh, or just Puerto Ricans in general in the press box. Mm. So one, two, three, he wins. And I started a Puerto Rico chant. Like I was like, <laughs> so sick. like all that stuff. We were going wild in the I press box, it. like crazy. You would have thought we won the World Series or something like <laughs> I went wild when he won. I'm so happy. Bisexual Undertaker won the world heavyweight <laughs> championship. So, someone had to say and, it. Someone had to say it. And man, it was dope. Yeah, I had to say it. I had to say it. But it was <laughs> it was dope, man. Like it was what the second cash in in WrestleMania history. Obviously, you can't beat yeah. Seth Rollins coming out. But that was a really solid moment for it just for WrestleMania. I think from what I heard um it was the second longest uh time that someone had the money in the bank briefcase sure i think the mm-hmm. first I was it. carmella 
I believe. Right. That yeah, sounds yeah, right. Yeah, from WrestleMania mm-hmm. 34. Yeah, so, like, it was a good moment overall. But, like, I just feel like in that moment, right, he wins the title. He goes up to the ramp. Judgment Day is celebrating with him. I was like, oh, Judgment Day has to stay together. Like, they've had to yeah, stay together. Yeah. They got to, like, continue this, like, domination that they're running through the entire roster. Even though they lost the tag titles, I think it's fine. Like, I love mm. that now him and Rhea have those titles. They're identical as well. Yep. Uh, even holding it up on Monday, Monday Night Raw, and then our truth comes. In. Yeah, so <laughs> good, so <laughs> such so a good solid. shot, good. such a good shot. <laughs> so good, so good. I was really happy with with this match. Like the match was good overall, but then to mm, yep. top it all off with Damian cashing in, solid stuff. And man. again, that's how you open up night two. The crowd was absolutely locked in after that and was was just ready mm-hmm. to go mm-hmm. do you see see ria's comment under damien's instagram <laughs> yes, post I did. the dot 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 bisexual undertaker always serving <laughs> yeah. may he Fill rest in, in style so sick yeah no i love that even like dom like people are thinking dom's gonna leave maybe dom's gonna go to you know with santos or lwo yeah. but like seeing dom look up to big brother Damien mm. and mommy. It's just like, ah, oh, I, I want, I you want, can't. uh, Dom to stay. Um, yeah. Um, 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 all right. All we'll, right. we'll move I, on here. I have to actually pee. All so right. We'll be here. Bad, so I'll be right back. We'll be here. <laughs> uh, bu- 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 Sorry, everyone lost my place. Okay. Oh, it's, it's you. I swear to God. He Would went to the bathroom. Sox fan to do that. <laughs> He he went to the bathroom <laughs> during this match, and he's going again while we're talking about this match. He didn't see any of this match. He went to the bathroom for the whole thing. Wow. And then now uh, we got the Pride defeating Final Testament with Snoop Dogg on commentary. My, t- my takeaway was this was way more fun and way better than it needed to be. Um, I mean, everyone in this match is talented, but like, after this match, I was like, oh, and then Bubba Ray also uh, as a special guest referee. They tons of table spots, the huge frog splash from Montez. Um, everything about this, I think Alex, like you were saying earlier, is WrestleMania is just fun, and this was just a fun, good, unexpectedly great, I think, match. Um, I'm curious what your thoughts are on it. It's a fun match, man. It's a Philly street fight. You showing up with the like ECW vibes with Bubba Ray being the special guest referee. Like it was not much to expect from this match, you know, like it was fun. Shenanigans. Love the shenanigans. You had Snoop Dogg coming out, uh, promoting the gin and juice. Oh, so good. <laughs> like the, the sponsorships was just, it was good, man. It was good. It was solid. Uh, yeah, it's not much to say about this match other than yeah. it was fun. It was. I don't think I had any expectations going into this match, and uh, I I had a ball. I had a ball. Yeah, that's 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 my takeaway too. Is like is like I just I just sat there and after it was over. I was like that was fun. Like it wasn't that serious, and yeah. like that's kind of that's kind of all I got with it too. Dante, you don't even need a. You went to the bathroom for it. You don't need. We, we can just move on if you want. <laughs> all right, hold on. I have. I do have something to say about this match. Okay. <laughs> I I want to apologize. Yep. I want to apologize to the Street Profits, Bobby Lashley, <laughs> Karrion Cross, and Authors of Pain, because that is the second time that I've walked out on your match and talking about your match. I will say, I did watch it back. I okay. did. Wa- I have been starting to watch a few matches back. I did start with that one because I did miss it. I wasn't going to the bathroom. I was in line to get two hot dogs and a beer. The, oh, line, that's what it was. the line was very I couldn't pass up on the two dogs and beer for 30 bucks deal. It was the cheapest thing you. I was going to get. So it was funny because I left during the entrances, and as I'm like next up, I hear ding, ding, ding. I'm like, are you kidding me it's the whole thing i was god damn it um but yeah no it was a it was a fun i heard you guys saying it was a fun match just philly street fight bubba ray dudley was there mm-hmm. snoop dogg on commentary i know we didn't hear it live but watching it back added so much to it snoop dogg's uh he's a hilarious commentator so yeah just wanted to add that yeah. sorry guys <laughs> sorry guys all right we had la knight defeating aj styles and i uh, it's this is kind of another one where I don't have much. I even have a little less to say about this. To be honest, it was good. Both these guys are fucking workers. Yeah. Um. And it was solid. It was a much needed, much needed big stage win for LA Knight. Whether that moves him on to maybe the United States Championship picture, we'll see what kind of happens. Um. But this was this was just like a good, 
uh, a good middle of the show uh, workhorse match. I was going to say it was a good match. He's throwing the middle of the card. Um, you know, their history goes back a few months. They were uh, involved in the fatal four way match at Royal Rumble for the championship. Uh, AJ Styles alludes to, you know, LA Knight's the reason why he lost. Mm-hmm. He got pinned and stuff. Obviously, LA Knight cost AJ Styles a spot in the chamber. AJ Styles flew halfway across the world or, you know, ha- through, uh, flew across the world uh, to cost LA Knight uh, the Elimination Chamber match. And they had the brawl, the the uh, breaking into his house, like the yep. whole arrest thing, whatever. You can't go wrong with a, an angle like that. But, yeah, it was it was a good match. I mean, it's nothing really like – and nothing like super special about it, but it yeah. was like a good match for both guys. I mean – it's probably one of AJ's better WrestleMania matches because he doesn't really have the best sure. uh, record when it comes to WrestleMania matches. Um, but I thought it was really good. And I'm, I don't know about you, Alex, but I think that this is like the launching pad to the an actual genuine LA Knight push in 2024, whether it's a mid-card championship or even a Money in the Bank. Yeah, I mean, that reaction for LA Knight, man, you can't deny it. Like, yeah. I think... Going into WrestleMania, I was a little sad because I thought that LA Knight should have had some kind of championship match. Even if he was thrown into that United States championship, um, I thought he deserved a little bit more. Uh, I will say this is the match where I got my second plate of mac and cheese and barbecue. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) But I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought this match was okay. It, It delivered what what it had to it was no high expectations yeah. for this yeah uh aj styles coming out and debuting a new theme a new song. song so it, yep. i Fire. thought right it was a new theme song yeah Fire. do we like it do it's we like good, it pretty solid yeah yeah i thought okay. it was, i thought it was cool yeah it's nothing yeah it's yeah. not yeah nothing nothing, cool. nothing special but it was good good yeah. heel song yeah nothing nothing's good gonna top this first all one right too. match yeah yeah same z's all right Logan Paul defeats Kevin Owens and Randy Orton to retain the United States Championship. Spoiler, SummerSlams in Cleveland. I do. Um, yeah, I don't think this was one of the best matches of the weekend, but this is don't? one. No, I oh. think it was one of my favorite matches oh, of the okay. weekend. No, if I think of like my top three, it doesn't crack it, but I think of like my favorite matches, it's definitely up there. I for like me. this a lot. I that love this match. Yeah. Loved it. Um, uh, 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 boom, boom, boom. I show speed, shows up in the prime <laughs> bottle. Um, I mean, the prime. It's a great I, bit. It's a great it's, bit. It's, it's a good. I mean, that's that, that's what I like to refer to it as. It's a good mm-hmm. bit. Uh, I don't even want to talk yeah. about like like the the advertising with it. Whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, Randy Orton hits <laughs> hits I show speed with an RKO on the announce Starts table. Starts barking at him. Starts before barking at him. <laughs> Shit. I love <laughs> this. Like we thought we had veteran Orton during his last run. Mm-hmm. This is veteran having fun. Love Orton. it. Even the moment where he like mm-hmm. he goes to RKO Kevin and then it doesn't work out and he's just like, kinda just like like the facial expression. he like he's always been really good like expressing in the ring. Emotion, but yeah. nothing to this. I think this is like the the way he's like adding personality and expressions in the ring, I think is something we've never seen from before. Yeah. And it and I think it's because it's like a little more like looseness and like mm-hmm. you know he's, he's a little yeah he just feels a little more like the better in order you thing. can you can tell that he's just like he's just having fun out yeah. there and he's said it multiple times in interviews and even on on wrestling on television like this is like a second opportunity for him like he was gone for a year and a half he didn't know if he was ever going to come back so now that he's here he's just enjoying every moment even like a little thing i noticed was like when he got to the room, he started doing his pose. You can tell he was kind of soaking. He was like looking mm. around, soaking in. Like, damn, like I haven't been in this position in a few years. Like, he was just soaking it all in, and I think that it brings out the best of him. Um, the him and Kevin coming out on the cart too. That Kevin goes great. down, and then Randy Orton's music hits. He starts backing up, and Randy's good. like holding us. Oh, slow down, slow he down, goes, slow Whoa. down. Um, yeah, I I love this match and Logan Paul. Love him or hate him as a person, whatever. But man, as a wrestler, as a Good performer, him, woo, mm. dude, his frog splash at the end, the height that he get, he is, good. he just gets it. I, I, I can, I, I've said it many, many times. And I don't want to like keep repeating myself, but he, he has it. He is. This is the best. Like he found his thing. Yeah. He found his thing. Alex, how do you feel about the Maverick? Yeah. Logan Paul retaining. Ugh. You know, like, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's so it's so hard because like I don't want to like him, 
but he is so damn good. I get it. He is too damn good at this stuff, man. Like, Mm -hmm. he just, he gets it. There's something that really clicked with him in this industry. He understands it. He understands, like, his role in this game. You know what I mean? Like, he understands Mm -hmm. that he is basically the outsider, the cocky personality going into this. And that's what this is all about, right? It's, it's, it's professional wrestling heels are best when they're cocky he yep. slightly reminds me like the attitude of it the attitude that he presents in in professional wrestling reminds me slightly of Shawn michaels like 90s mm. during dx like it kind of reminds me of that Damn, i don't think he's as good as a wrestler Sean. as Shawn, but sure. i think like you know, he, he did his role. He did what he had to do. I love the beginning of uh, KO in the golf court, and he, like, backed up. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. I was expecting Randy to, like, hit the pose, but I also didn't <laughs> hold on He was hanging on. Yeah, he had to hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He had to hold on on that. I like the bit of the prime bottle. I think they should bring it. Yeah uh at wrestlemania possibly every year maybe maybe every year we all thought jake paul was gonna be in that uh mascot oh Um, yeah 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 yeah. with the with the fight coming up with tyson the netflix deal with wwe i thought jake paul was gonna be in that suit but he wasn't which was fine my pick Um, was mr beast you know (laughs) Oh my god, <laughs> Mr. Beast! It should have been a burger <laughs> mascot. Yeah, that's true. Case. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, overall, it it was a solid match all across the board. Ko well, looked good. Randy mm-hmm. looked good. Uh, them teaming up together to take on like you know, you know Logan, and then they're fighting each other. It, it was good. It was good all all across the board. Uh, but you know, it's it's. It is nice to see a figure like Ro- like Logan Paul, who you would think would disrespect the industry left and right, but he doesn't. Like, he does no. the work. Even, like, his reaction to Night 2 with Cena yep. coming out, mm-hmm. Taker coming out, you know, recording his reaction. Like, he gets it. It sucks, but he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> but even like, even, like, his podcast almost, like, oftentimes being an extension of it and him having, like, mm. Randy and Cena and Ray on. It's just, like, it's it, – that even – and I'm not an impulsive listener, but I'll listen to the wrestling to the wrestling episodes. And, like, I listen to the Ray one. Just, like, you know, you can tell he has a respect for it and a passion for it. And then on top of that, like, the podcast itself, I think, gives a really rare – uh like an insight kind of yeah insight with these wrestlers and you hear stories and, and and tidbits you might not hear on other shows or other podcasts or whatever um so yeah i i'm i'm also in the camp of like of like a damn i wish you weren't that good yeah damn, I and wish you weren't you're good. right <laughs> he respects the business he said I, I think it was a few days ago he was like i can't believe i'm saying this but like preparing for my match against kevin owens was harder than me preparing to fight floyd mayweather like yeah that i mean yeah. like it's two very different things and stuff but like the thing logan paul has said before like training for wrestling is the hardest he's also thing said I've he's bad done. at boxing he's also like admitted being like yeah I'm not well good it's at true <laughs> yeah it's true i mean there's a reason why his brother is still doing it and not him but like yeah. but he he gets it he respects it and i think that's the most important thing as a person you don't have to like him you don't have you can have whatever opinion you want on him but like in that ring like he is he's really really good uh before the final match we get to uh there's a lot of bray wyatt tributes and there was one kind of massive one um that happened on i believe it was night two uh really touching i my takeaway is like i've been to a couple wrestling shows uh i've been to a couple raws a couple smackdowns within the past year and it's always a surreal moment to see everyone coming together to put the flashlight up and it's like everyone everyone collectively joining in on this like on this thing to create the firefly in honor yeah. of Ray Wyatt. and it's mm-hmm. just like and then seeing it leveled up in the stadium yeah was just it was so cool a, a crazy moment to not only be a part of mm-hmm. but like to witness just that 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 moment i yeah. think that, i think they did a really good job all weekend and that'll, like, that'll uh, always carry on with every yeah, event it's amazing uh, it's live really cool. shows um live events like the house shows and stuff and also like we don't have to get into it but i mean 
there's a lot of a lot of stuff going around now, and they actually did something on Monday Night Raw where oh, uh, Uncle Howdy mm-hmm. they might be you know bringing him in and stuff like that. I don't know if um you saw the that they were playing like the music before Raw, that, and yeah. even when Bronson Reed had his promo, like the screen kind of like malfunctioned or glitched out for a second, and people are saying that. So uh, something to keep your eye out for, but it, it's we'll see what happens there. But going back to the tribute, it is it's always beautiful to see, yeah. always beautiful, yeah. All right. All right. Bailey defeats EO Sky mm. to become your new uh woman WWE Women's Champion. Yep. I always get the two. Yeah, yeah, stuff. Women's Champion. Um a <laughs> I think a it's always a tough spot no matter who who's in there right before the main event. Yeah. And it was right after this triple threat that I thought was really good. And I thought they take I, I thought they took this challenge and I thought they exceeded. I thought this was so good. Eo Sky, I thought, played her heel role really well. Um her her theme live and her entrance was awesome. so, so sick. cool. Uh blah, blah, blah. uh and yeah, I mean I I have a couple of notes here, but I want to Alex, I want to hear what you have to say uh about this match. I want to hear your takeaways. Solid match, man. Again, solid match. My thing, okay, I felt that the entrances were underwhelming with this with this match. I don't think you that's know, crazy. Seeing yeah. how we got like Jade, Naomi, Bianca, yeah. even like Rhea. I know <clears throat> that Bailey really wanted Paramore to play her out. Mm, that's been like her yeah. dream of WrestleMania. They couldn't do it, uh, which is fine. They still had the Haley Williams song Shimmer uh, um, in the video package, which was good. I thought the video package was really, really good. Yeah, um, it was great. But yeah, I didn't understand the uh, Egyptian like. <laughs> And tr- I just I didn't understand it. If it was her own personal thing, like, sh- congrats. But I just I didn't get it. Um, it was fine. Uh, Eo's entrance I thought could have been much better, especially her sure. coming in as a champion. But mm-hmm. you can't deny that theme song. Like when that music hits, the strobe lights go off. Like oh, it's yeah. a really solid theme. Uh, live to experience. But overall, man, that match was good. It was a little slow at first. It did pick up. Um, Bailey got the win, and again, you know, Bailey is for the workers. When she yeah. won the Royal Rumble, that shot of the entire crowd like pointing at the sign with her was great. I thought the story going into this match as well, with you know the portrayal of Damage Control, her like understanding Japanese and spoke Japanese back at them SmackDown. Like I thought this was solid. I think the tease of like Dakota. So going into this match, a solid story that was told. I think the match was good though. Um, but that's a match that I need to watch back a little bit more right. because I mm-hmm. thought the energy of I thought the energy of the crowd versus the quality of the match just didn't match up. I don't sure. know if it was from where I was, but I didn't hear a pop for EO. Like I thought the crowd was dead for Thanks. EO. So and yeah, I was I, a little disappointed. I was that. confused. Yep. I, I thought the same thing. Because some pissed. people were saying too, like her music, like her the bass of the music was so loud. So people were like, oh, it's just like you can't really hear it. I but I don't know. So. I really don't no, know. I, in our, I can only speak to section one thirty five, but. I was losing my mind <laughs> and everyone else was sitting down mm. and I, I even tweeted, I live tweeted. I was like, I was like, everyone is sitting down to fuck everybody here. <laughs> da, da, da. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's good. That I'm, I'm glad you said that. Cause I, I also thought the same thing. Um, again, I don't think there'd be, I don't think the tough spot has anything to do with like the pop, the, 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 the entrances would get, but yeah, I, uh, I can't say I disagree with much of you said. I thought that I think the entrances, I, well, while I did love, what they gave us i do think there could have been another level i was pissed off at the crowd for not respecting my goat uh eo that is um but yeah i uh i thought the last 10 minutes like you know seven eight nine ten minutes were like really ramped up yeah. and was like 100%. you know kind of kind of got everyone into it um but yeah 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 no i thought yeah. it was yeah i thought the match was it, it wasn't the match of the weekend it wasn't even the match of the night but you know 
we knew the story going into it. We we knew everything. I, I think it was personally the the best story of WrestleMania if you take out the whole Cody Roman, obviously mm-hmm. Rock Seth stuff, um, because this has been building up since SummerSlam 2022. It's two yeah. years in the making. So I think if the whole if the Rock didn't come back and all this and that, <laughs> I really do think that this could have main evented night one. I definitely I think it had the mm-hmm. the story to back it up and everything. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. I think like the, the react, like the crowd and the level of the quality of the match didn't really align. At least that's what it seemed like live. Um, I need to definitely watch it back and just kind of see if I have the same opinion or not. But EO Sky, I mean, she sold, uh, like a champ. Oh my God. Her, like yeah. towards the end when, um, she did the, um, she, Bailey went to hit her move and then she like did the, the front flip kind of oh, with yep, her yep, hand. Yep. And then when she sold oh, it at the end, God. best moonsault in the game too. Um, EO looked like a stud even when she, uh, losing, but Bailey long time coming. She hasn't had a world championship in, in a long time. Mm. So hopefully, you know, she gets a really lengthy reign here cause she, she's one of the greatest female wrestlers of this generation, if not all time. So definitely deserve that moment. We say it all the time. And it almost is like annoying at this point, but like, uh, predictable doesn't mean bad. Right. This was like with throughout the whole story, of course Bailey was winning. It's mm-hmm. the perfect cap off to the story yeah. of mm-hmm. finally, you know, everyone yeah. turned on her. She built up damage control. Um, yeah, it was just like it felt good. It made sense, and it made sense in a good way. Yep. I'm excited for her run. I really am. I'm excited for like there's so many new champions coming yeah. out of Mania. I'm excited for everyone. Yeah, it's, run. A, it's a new era. Um, but I'm really excited for Bailey's run for sure. Yeah. No, I'm with you. And she looked good with the belt too. She looked great with the belt. I'm excited to see what's yeah. next. With that said, any 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 final thoughts while we're while we're still kind of flowing? I think oh. I'm WrestleMania just, out. Just I think. A, I mean, just a wild wild weekend to to experience. It's WrestleMania 40. You know, it's the biggest. This was the biggest WrestleMania in history from the amount of like media mm. outlets that were covering it. Yeah. Uh, just the match quality all across the board, like the show. Loved the the stage also. Like I thought, yeah. a lot of people thought that the like it was underwhelming. I thought it was Not great. It was, it was solid. simple. Yeah, it was solid. Yeah, exactly. Like I thought it was really good. Uh, overall, I will say, <laughs> night one press conference. There was somebody that got kicked out of the press conference. <laughs> there we go. Settle yeah, it. We Settle go. it. I wanna, Put it listen, to rest. I want to clear the air. That was not me. Because for <laughs> some reason, for some reason, people thought it was me. Like someone tagged me on Twitter and was like, is this you on TikTok? Yo, even my mom was watching and she thought it was me. I don't know why. That's awesome. It was not. <laughs> it was a fan. <laughs> I acknowledge the tribal chief, okay? Mm-hmm, Even though I wanted Cody to finish the story, I acknowledge the tribal chief. Uh, but the press conference was solid. Like, I, dude, being in that room in an intimate setting with The Rock, like, you could feel the star power just oozing off of him, uh, dropping the final boss gimmick and just being like TKO board member Rock was like just wild to be to experience that and i was telling y'all in the car just a full circle moment for me meeting him at the wwf restaurant in times square when i was Mm -hmm. like 10 years old and then being in that room as media was just a wild that has to be like definitely the highlight of my weekend for sure like professionally um but yeah like overall just a solid solid weekend of you know enjoying the thing that we love the most, which is professional wrestling, but like connecting with different creators in the space too. Like when you guys, like when y'all tweeted out, I immediate was like, we need to meet up right now. (laughs) Like we have to. Hell yeah. Uh, And then WWE world was so much fun. How was it for you guys? Cause you guys got all that awesome content, but like just overall the gear that was displayed at WWE world was just wild to see up and close and personal. I'll definitely, be, definitely overwhelming. I was gonna say overwhelming. I it mean, it, it was just like there was so much going on. We were there for a few hours, and like you kind of said it earlier too. It's like when you meet fans because we had a ton of fans come up, uh, meet us, talk to us, take pictures of us, and, and thank, thank God because that's how we. Got yeah, the thank cons, thank I God. Wanna, I hate man on the street stuff going up to like. That's why we don't do it going up to like strangers. Thank God for everyone that like knew us and we're like, you want to be in a quiz? And they're like, yeah, you made our, you made our jobs a lot easier. Absolutely. We appreciate it. Um, But it's, it's very (laughs) cool. Like one, like I always think like 
it's the coolest when like you have like uh younger kids come up mm-hmm. to you and stuff like with their parents and like people like at that age that watch is always cool but also hearing things like people like you know you inspired me to make a podcast you inspired mm-hmm. me to start a youtube channel and you stuff like that wrestling. like you got me back into wrestling like those little things like mm-hmm. that's the coolest thing to me um just like i don't look at it this way but i guess we you know some people and take what we do and it inspires them to do their own thing um and that's something that's just very very cool um to hear especially like in person like they're being personal they're like hey like i want to thank you for like inspiring me whatever um that stuff is also is just always really cool to hear so yeah i mean between what they had going on that i really wanted to get a tattoo at the pavilion oh, i, I really did i didn't have the chance time. we didn't have the time um <laughs> that was the one thing i was disappointed about but you know from when we got there to leaving it was it was very 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 cool wait yeah. what would you get from the tattoo pavilion? i'll tell you right now you so it's actually it's it's funny because so i've had this tattoo I I use Pinterest a lot to get my tattoo ideas. It's <laughs> just like Pinterest it's a great a place to do it. It's a great place to find like ideas and inspiration. And I've always wanted to get like like a, a wrestling tattoo, but not anything that's like the WWE logo or nothing like that. That's like super like big or stands out. Jeff Hardy, corny. You can say corny. Jeff Hardy, corny. Jeff Hardy is my favorite wrestler of all time, and I came across this one where it's like a silhouette of like a ladder, and he's standing on top with like his arms spread out, and he has like the sleeves on. Take a picture of it, so you can tell you can tell who it is. Um, and I, a few days going into it, I was seeing like TikToks of people like, oh, these are the tattoos they have, and they had this one on the flash sheet, which I thought was absolutely crazy. Here I can, if you can see it right there. there. Um, oh. So. I've Hard. I've wanted that for like a, a few years and they had it and I'm like this is like this is the stars are aligning it's a sign <laughs> I gotta get it again we didn't have time to I think I'm gonna schedule a tattoo appointment in the next week or That's two because like Let's go. I'm just like it's it's at the top it's in like the front of my mind it's top of my head like I just need to get it done um but that's what I would have gotten that's what I would have gotten if I had time I, wanted, I know you wanted I wanted Ray Mysterio mask Right on my leg. <laughs> That's what I want. That would have been sick. Again, I think we're, we're both like, yeah, we're going to get Because also, like, uh, I want one uh, to kind of commemorate the week. Because, like, our week has been uh, we won our debut wrestling match yep. last Saturday. Uh, and that the, the, to commemorate that whole experience alone, uh, line that up with, like, a couple of crazy just, like, big pod episodes um, and just, you know, things things going really well here and then cap it off with just wrestlemania 40 weekend so i kind of wanted like one or two to kind of commemorate like not just wrestlemania 40 but the week as a whole right, so right. like you know um but yeah i think i'm also yeah. i gotta schedule something for sure uh but yeah what would you have got <laughs> if you went not I the not you saw flash man i mean i saw i saw a couple where it was like a mashup of Star Wars and wrestling. Like, oh, I was, saw like, those too. Trooper yep. helmets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, with like cool. Cody's like tattoo. Uh, I think something like that with like, I don't know. I don't know what I would get with that. Um, I already have a wrestling tattoo. I have a Kenny Omega little devil guy on oh, my leg. Yeah. Sick. I felt like I had to hide it of like, my leg is going to burn. Oh, right. <laughs> WWE event with an AEW tattoo, yeah. kind of. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I would get. Um, but it was cool to see like the flashes and how creative like those artists yeah. were with combining uh, different things. Like I saw uh like a super mario with a ray mysterio mask oh, yeah. i saw super yeah. mario flash with like gold dust mm. uh it was really solid stuff and i was like when i found out there was a tattoo sh- like shop in in the wwe world i was like ain't no way like that's yeah. wild but it was really cool that they like it contribute was. that as well because like i see that a lot at starcast starcast the first one uh with all in in chicago that's where I got my Kenny Omega tattoo. So oh, for them sick. to like do that and collaborate with like local artists as well was solid. Mm-hmm. I think they need to bring that back as well because it made the the experience a lot more different than a regular WWE access that they would do. Um, I I definitely if I had the time, I would have gotten something. I just don't really know what I yeah. would have got. I don't I don't know. I don't know what I would get. I don't know. Maybe like a. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> there was a lot of know. options. Like, there was a lot of options. Yeah, there was so many options because there was like what five or six different artists. Yeah, yeah. That I were heard there, that. Just I think different styles. I think I think Rhea's personal, or not personal, like Rhea, Rhea's artist. I don't know if she was there for like the whole weekend, but Rhea's artist was there, and I like I saw mm. like Rhea got her arm done. I don't mm. know if I don't know if they were there the whole time or just or just there for a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was it was like. Uh, not out of place, but like, like, well, almost like out of place in a good way for WWE, because you know you see all like you know like all the other setups yeah. and the stores, or whatever, and then just like a cool other option of like, you know, oh, we can only do this here, or this is unique to this year, or whatever. Um, yeah, I agree with you. I think it'd be sick, and also like, I'm gonna plan accordingly next time. To I think one thing we ran into is like, we didn't have we didn't have time for anything. Mm -hmm. I think the only extra thing we went to which was fun we went to the busted open party uh in the old ecw 2300 arena yeah. which was like cool to be in and also cool to be in that arena um but like i really wish we like planned not plan things out but had maybe, maybe had more time and and to like hit some indie shows or even the nxt show like there's a lot of stuff we missed i don't not to say i regret anything or missed out on anything but there's a lot of stuff of like I think that we, that's what I meant by like the learning curve. Early, yeah. I guess. Like, you know, we definitely learned mm -hmm. like, okay, next trip, we need an extra day or we need an extra, you know, time to do this or whatever. Um, but first mania learning curve, unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable experience. Um, and yeah, and it was good to, it was good to connect with you and I'm glad that we made this happen. Hell yeah. Me too, man. I'm glad. Like I said, when I found out you guys were in town, had to meet up uh yeah wrestlemania weekend is just overwhelming in general like you need to make Crazy. like an actual itinerary but you got it was your first ones you know you got into you wrestlemania gotta learn. you got into both nights of wrestlemania you know you got to yes, experience some things as well uh so yeah i mean overall it's just a wild weekend you know sometimes mm -hmm. those weekends start wednesday there's so many shows that happen i went to the sam roberts comedy show uh wednesday uh that was a lot of fun Wale Mania was a movie. <laughs> that I is heard. I wild, know the wildest thing. My God, Wale Mania was just a trip <laughs> for sure. Uh, and even going to the the hotel bar Sunday night was wild. Just so many people, so many that faces fun. in there. I didn't know. Insane. I didn't know. I'm glad I, you I mentioned it. I didn't uh, know if we were mentioning it. Was there? Yep, T Pain. Yep. Yeah, we, we we did see him at WWE. Yeah, you <laughs> crossed by us at WWE World. <laughs> um but yeah yeah you, you little yeah i mean like man i wish i would have met him <laughs> he had his his entire he did, security he did have team his around security him guard so if feet. you got anywhere close to him you were getting a little yeah a little Bam. shove um <laughs> all right well i could i could talk about this 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 uh weekend forever but this might go down as the longest or we're getting close there to the longest episode that's the longest. um one. and and i think we're we're prepared for it we we're destined for it um alex where can people find you what's going on give everyone your plugs before we get out of here thank you so much i'm so happy to finally connect with y'all and do this uh do a show we got to do more of it uh oh, yeah. yeah you can find me on twitter queen of the ring with two g's uh youtube.com slash queen of the ring wrestling i have all my interviews there with different superstars uh just having countdowns like gear countdowns my podcast always there every friday 12 p.m eastern time we have different guests on uh twitch.tv slash queen of the ring every thursday 6 p.m eastern time we're watching lucha underground that's where you could also find my podcast there uh church of joshi is also another source if you want to get into joshi we got julia showing up to nxt we got Ooh. some of the stardom girls showing up to AEW. so it's a really great uh great chance to get into that world especially so you can follow church of joshi on instagram and twitter uh we go live sunday 12 p.m eastern time uh not this week though i need a break <laughs> yeah, don't yeah i need you. a break yeah. from some wrestling uh but definitely follow us there to catch up on some things uh as well again it's a great source i don't know too much about joshi but the amount of stuff that i know i like to bestow the wisdom uh but really it's the community the congregation that carries us on they know much much more than i do and it's just fun wrestling is fun when you don't really know anything and you're learning all together Absolutely. you know what i mean nobody has to be yep. the mark I know everything <laughs> kind of person, but uh, yeah, that's what I that's what I love to do. That's my brand, um, and yeah, that's where you can follow me there. Thanks, thanks again, guys. We finally Thank made it you. happen. Yeah. 
the stash yes. queen of the ring collaboration <laughs> <laughs> absolutely love it everyone go check out uh go check out alex on all that stuff uh we appreciate it you already get it follow us on everything please go buy a beanie god damn come on huh hoodies hoodies are basically sold out but beanies huh um that's all in the description everything you know in the description all of alex's stuff's in the description um and until then alex thank you again thank for you, thank joining you, thank us you. this was a ball um i'm gonna go edit away on this try to put this up uh <laughs> asap as possible but uh sh- we never know how to end these all right no <laughs> uh, bye that's the episode oh we'll all do right, one of these we'll get we'll get one of these we'll get, we'll get, we'll get one of these <laughs> until next time until next time boom, boom. peace <laughs>